Anyway, today is the day where we give feedback indeed. So on tonight's stream, as I've tweeted earlier today, I'm going to be checking out a couple of games, one by Lev Misery and one by Lynx of Undying 477, who submitted the games to the queue previously using the uh, form that you can fill out there. Uh, during the feedback streams, uh, we're going to be playing the game as always. So we're going to be uh, checking them out for about a half hour or so, and then we answer a bunch of que a bunch of questions that kind of address, um, you know, what was good about it, uh, what type of players would enjoy playing this, were there any barriers to that impact the player from experiencing the game or enjoying the game, uh, and just generally give it a bit of a, an analysis slash critique and and point out some of the good things as well. So um, let's say hi as well. We have uh, Namchi Nose in chat. Hello there. Gilblock as well. How you doing? How is South Africa at the moment, Mr. Gilblock? I mean, uh, coronavirus is pretty bad uh, there at the moment. Uh, but hopefully things are okay for you, good sir. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be checking out two games. Hello there, Misery Left as well. Hi, hi. One of the uh, devs of the games that we're playing today. So there's two screenshots I've checked out. This is uh, the one of them that we'll be checking out by Misery Lev. Uh, it's quite a, an, an interactive kind of coding game, which uh, I'm looking forward to checking out. I've not, I've done it. I, I didn't want to check it out too much before stream. So I've kind of, I'm leaving it to do it all as a first experience. And then uh, I did have a little peep at this to install it and make sure everything was going good. Uh, and this is uh, the screenshot I tried to capture a moment in it, but it's kind of like Doom-esque. It's kind of like a tribute-ish to Doom. Uh, the graphic style is actually quite very similar uh, in, in some respects, and I think that that kind of atmosphere, in a sense, has been caught well. Uh, but there's 3D enemies you can jump, which is very non-Doomy, but uh, it's not meant to be Doom, it's more so just inspired. But yeah, uh, th this looked good from just launching it, at least. I'm, I'm hoping that there's, uh, there's a bit of content to it for me to explore and... Um, try and kind of progress through a level at least uh so yeah they're, they're the two games that we'll be checking out today uh Gilblock says that you're good but hiding from the virus and waiting for the lions game oh you yes i forgot you into the rugby as well so south africa a managed to beat the lions which didn't bode massively well for the lions i, I think yeah we, they haven't really it's a weird tour the lions because it's very challenging i guess to get like a coherent uh, team when you're changing the, the team every week and when there's so many good players who don't normally play with each other. But the, the test matches are normally quite entertaining. So I just hope that they're close and they're, they're interesting games because some of the high scorers that we've had against the regional clubs is just... They're, they're less interesting because it doesn't feel as tense, if that makes sense. The South Africa A game was good because it was tense, even though we lost. But hello there, Ashbart VT. A good day to you, good sir. Uh, right, okay, so, um, yeah, we will get started with these. I am guessing uh, Lynx is not in chat, so I think what we're probably going to be better off if we start with uh, Misery Lev's game. That gives us a chance to check that out, and maybe by the time we're finished, um, uh, dev number two will be in chat. Uh, if they're not, we'll still play the game anyway. I sent him an email this morning to let him know that I'd be playing, um, but still, it, it is preferred if the person is in chat. One thing that I wanted to do, and I'll try and do this quickly before I finish, is I wanted... Uh, I realise... Um, I kind of... I don't know if I want to share this list. So someone has asked before, like, can they see a list? But the thing is that it has like their email address and stuff like that on there. So I don't know if I do want to make this public um, for other people to to see what the list looks like. I need to think about that. But yeah, for now, we, we were, I was going to add it onto the end of that feedback command, but I don't think I will. But yeah, we're checking out these two games today, which means we've only got one left on our list. Uh, I haven't advertised this anywhere yet, so I can start going to some discords maybe and post in there to see if anyone uh, has any games that they're interested in getting some feedback on. Um, but uh, yeah, we will have two weeks before we get onto that anyway. But right, okay, we're, without further ado then, let's uh, go ahead and start off uh, with the game by Misery Lev. So a little description of this then. So it's a real-time strategy game where you control your units by writing JavaScript code. Okay, cool. Uh, it's been in development for six months and it's HTML5 based. Uh, and it'll be roughly 15 minutes to, to give it a go, is what we've been told. 
Now, you're welcome to try this yourself. It is hosted on a website. There's no need to download it. So let me just drop a link to this in the chat. There you go. And that should take you to the same page that I've got here. Does it need to be a fully playable loop? Good question. Uh, I think I've worded it before. If we click on this feedback form. So the game should generally be an unpublished and active in development. This can be as early as a prototype or as late as an alpha beta. The important thing is that the, uh, the game has a, ga a core game loop, enough mechanics for a solid like five to ten minutes of gameplay. So if I'm just jumping around in an empty level with nothing to do, it may not quite be at the point for me. Um, but... If there's enough for me to try out in a 10 minute window, then that is fine. What I'd recommend is that people try and give good estimates when it says like, how long will it take to play your game to say if it's if it's not super fleshed out to, to give a bit of a concept of that. So yeah, yeah as long as there's, there's enough to do, I think if there's a little bit of a game loop and it's lacking polish, or if it's, you know, some of the game loop and not all of it, then that, that should be fine as well. As long as you feel that there's areas that that I can play it not just for the sake of playing it for 10 minutes. That would be great. Five to 10 minutes, I said. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So um, if it, when you feel your game, Ash, because I know you've been working on something at the moment, if you feel it's at a point where you uh, want me to give it a go, do feel free to submit, man. Okie dokie. So there is cotton t shirt So uh, the, the submission form is here. Uh, I don't. They're not like live during stream submissions, so you can add it to that list. And what happens is uh, every two weeks I do this and every other week I do interviews with people who publish games. But on these streams, uh, I will take the next two off the list. We've only got one left on the list. So two d weeks today, we would go into here and I would email the two people here and say, I'm going to be playing your game tonight. Uh, and then I will play those games, even if the dev's not in stream. And then I, I record them as a VOD as well. So you are able to go to my channel. Uh, and if you go to the video section, you got to click on the name. It's hidden away, which I don't particularly like, but that's fine. And if we go into videos, you should be able to see that I've got um, uh, different sections in here. So if you go into collections, it's so hidden away, I dislike it. Um, and yeah, in here you can see my interviews. I need, I've got one more interview to add into here that we had recently. Uh, and then also we've got our feedback streams that I've been doing here as well. So uh, they will be added to there just in case they are missed. Uh, but yeah, anyway, okay, sweet. Hello there, Artifacts, how good to see you. Let's get started uh, with this. So real-time strategy game where you control your units by writing JavaScript. So this is all we're, we're kind of presented with so far. It's one of those web pages we scroll down quite a bit. So we've got some pictures at the moment. First impression here is it's uh, an intentionally kind of minimal style. I think it's been done in terms of the uh, the colors and the uh, and the general kind of uh, aesthetics of it. It's been done to a good standard. It doesn't look... Um, it's, it's style, right? Rather than... It's simple, but that is the style and it looks intentfully done which is which is nice so two players uh, in the middle of a battle here we have spirits harvesting energy from a star uh i'm guessing these are spirits and this is a star and they're, they're taking energy from it and sending it then to the base so they then go back to the base and then that charges up the base possibly spirits going into a fight okay so are these enemies red may is typically enemy but i'd assume so the fact they're connected here yeah, who knows who knows okay so we have a tutorial and then we have uh create an account to play for free okay cool 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 uh, again i'm gonna just drop this link in chat like that in case anyone else wants to play along uh because we do at the end of it just to keep in mind uh at the end of this we will go through a bunch of these questions so we talk about the accessibility the gameplay the audio visual side of things uh, the player experience and the future development of the game as well. Okay. So, um, there's documentation, there's a Reddit for it, uh, and there's a Discord server for it. Cool, nice to, to get, uh, give access to all of the different ways to keep in touch regarding the game. So, easy to learn, difficult to master. One versus one, harvest energy from the stars and use it to create new spirits. The units games, uh, the game's units, sorry attack and defend yourself 
Uh, write real JavaScript code, create functions, and adjust your code in real time, reacting to the current state of the game. Uh, or feel free to try writing a fully autonomous code without supervision. Okay, that's interesting. And it does sound, uh, it's got lovely potential with that, that kind of concept at least, hasn't it? Okay, so let's learn the basics with an interactive tutorial and then we'll sign up for an account. I really like that you've got a way to test the game without having to sign up because we do talk about like uh, barriers to the game, right? And that's something that we, the fact that you can try it without having to give an email and go through that sort of process. Uh, a good, that was going to be a suggestion of mine, but I didn't realize you'd done it, so good on you. Okay. Uh, to start, type s1.move star ZQ, uh, zxq.position. Uh, yeah, into the code block below and press enter to, okay, code goes here, activate it by pressing the button below or with shift and enter. Okay, cool. I like how it says shift and enter down here as well in case we missed that. Yeah, very nice UI so far. I'm hoping the text is nice and clear. Uh, I'll make it just a little bit bigger so people can see. Hopefully zooming in doesn't change anything. Uh, we should make an honest feedback card that can be emailed to to the developer if you have a website maybe you can set it up as a community project uh, what do you mean by that exactly oh as in what with my feedback on it you mean uh okay uh, so let's let's do it so it says to do s1 so s1 is going to be my spirit i'm guessing uh does it is it going to give me autocomplete at all it okay my first impression is it feels it feels a pretty laggy like when I'm typing in, I'm just going to make sure it's not because I'm zoomed in, weirdly. No, it is laggy. Okay, that's just something to be aware of. Uh, and it is noticeably so. So we want to move that. Oh. Oh, what's happened here? Server interruption. Okay, never mind. Let's start a new game. Performance is best in Firefox. Well, we could, well let's jump to Firefox. That's all good. No problem with that. Thank you for that. I've got Firefox on here, I think, have I? Blast. I mean, we can try an Edge. Edge works okay sometimes as well. Uh, for, like, games, I've noticed. Let's see if it goes in any quicker. Let's go into here. We'll give it a go. Because uh, I don't have Firefox installed. Yes, that's, that's so much better. So much better. Okay, so S1 move. Okay, and then star uh, zxq dot position. Oops. So there's some auto completion in the sense that it put like a close bracket at the end, but there's no like auto complete of like what members are available. But uh, that's okay. Uh, there's no semicolon needed. It hasn't told me, so I'm just gonna press shift and enter. Oh, okay. So this is our S1, I'm guessing. And that's going to the star. This is our base. The tooltips are nice. Ah, lovely. Okay, Misery Lev, thank you for that update. The autocomplete is something that's on the way, bro. Well done. The spirit is using the move method to get to the star. Uh, energize is the other important method in the game. It tells your spirit where to transfer energy. Uh, okay, so add S1, energize, S1. Oh, you can click and copy it, can you? Okay, that, that, I mean, that's good in terms of accessibility, right? Hover over the snippet to learn more about what it does. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so that works for move as well. Okay, okay. So, S1, reference to your spirit object. In the real game, outside this tutorial, you'll be your username plus a number, like Arnold4. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the tooltips are cool. Okay, so the entrance target method is for transferring energy. Target is an object, so what we want to transfer our energy. If the target is uh, at the same, is the same as origin, the spirit will attempt to harvest energy from a new. Oh, so I got to do uh, put myself in there with that. Yeah, that's why it's S one as a parameter, right? I would I would have expected that. What if it's not? Okay, um, yeah. What if it's not? I kind of want to know. Like, what what if I do? S1 energize. Maybe it tries giving energy to it. Because I want to try and see if we can energize this star XQ uh, ZXQ. 
<laughs> Sorry for trying to break the game. Nice. The spirit is now harvesting energy. Oh, does it? Maybe did it check that I wrote the right thing? Hmm. Because or maybe it does work to harvest energy through doing it that way as well. Maybe you can tell it specifically, and if you just do it to itself, it all it works, but it shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. Appreciate that. That's just why it's so useful to have the dev in chat when we go through these. So nice. The spirit is now harvesting energy. Each spirit has a few properties that you can access and use. Uh, and used to make decisions. Try it out. Check whether uh, spirit's energy is equal to the energy capacity. And if yes, we're going to move back to the base. Okay, so um, autonomy here, right? Okay, hello there, Bauk. Nice to see you. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to say FS1 energy. Uh, is there... Oh, yeah, you said it's on the way. Okay, that's fine. Uh, ah! Ah! we got to start again. Okay, it seems like there's a timeout maybe on this tutorial. Maybe it's a connection timeout on the... I'm not 100%. We'll try it again anyway. I'll be a bit quicker. Okay, so... Uh, this time we will copy for the sake of making sure we get there. Okay, cool. Uh, and this time we'll do the what we're meant to do. Okay, update. Okay, there. So it's latched on. It's pulling the energy out of the star. That's good. Now we're going to go ahead and write it. Uh, so if uh, S1 energy is uh, equal to S1 energy capacity. Yeah, I, I would expect this autocomplete. Just when you're working with a framework that you, or a code base that you don't fully understand. Uh, I'd expect uh, at least to know what my options are because that helps you kind of be curious, I guess, if you're a coder. And it helps uh, syntax errors as well uh, be avoided. I'm sure you, you know this. You said it's in the way. I'm just thinking aloud. Okay, so. We're saying if our energy... So is that just going to do it once? Okay, it's got 50 energy. So I guess we would just go... We'd run that. Okay, good. It's on its way back. Good, but you know, it's a problem. When the spirit transfers a little bit of energy from the base, the statement returns false. And it'll stop... Uh, okay, so it gave it a little bit of energy. Is it now got 49? No, 45. Maybe it depletes 5 at a time. If you hover over the functions, no. Nothing on, the, on here. Not yet, at least. The code runs from top to bottom every second. Ah, so it happens once a second. Okay. Uh, and the command to the energize. That's what I was wondering about the loop. Is it just doing it once or not? Okay, let's fix this by using the memory object to store the spirit's activity. Memory is nothing more than an empty, pre-declared object. Okay, add this to your code. Okay, we've got quite a bit to write in here. I think we're still using some of this. Yeah, uh, energy capacity. Right, and we're changing in here. Uh, we're now going to say, right, in our memory object, we're going to add a property. I think that's what this is which is going to be equal to the ID of our current star. And um, we're going to set it to be in a charging state. JavaScript is weird. I've got a different keyboard at work at the moment, so uh, I have to keep looking at the keyboard I'm using right now uh, to make sure my, key, my fingers are in the right place. Okay, uh, and then otherwise, if not, then we want to go ahead and we're going to say that it's harvesting. Okay, so we're, we're keeping... We're, we're tracking a state here. We want to do it by the ID. And we're going to say harvesting. Okay, cool. So it's interesting that we're using semicolons all of a sudden. Before we weren't using semicolons, that'd be a bit of feedback I'd give in terms of uh, code consistency. Because for me, not doing JavaScript for a long time, I thought, oh, I don't need to do it. And now they are here. Um, it's just either use them all the time or don't. I think if your example should be consistent. Okay. And then right here, then we're going to say if it'll be without same. Okay. Sweet. Lovely. Thank you very much, Mizu. Ah, a raid. Wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. How are you doing today? Do let us know what you're up to on stream today. Very nice to meet you. My name is Dan. I'm a game developer based in the UK. Uh, I work at a studio and on Mondays and randomly some other times I do game dev. Uh, I used to use Unity and C Sharp and I now use 
Unreal Engine and C++ in order to make games. Uh, let us know what you're up to on the stream. Uh, we're at the moment doing a feedback stream where we play games submitted by people in the community and people who find the channel. Uh, and we're playing a game uh, by Misery Eleven Chat. Uh, you can play it on yar.io. That's Y A R E. Uh, and it's a JavaScript based uh, game where you can play against other people by coding your units to do specific things. Uh, okay, so uh, let, let's carry on writing out this code that uh, we're getting told to in the tutorial. So if memory, uh, and then, so we're, we're accessing the property, it's kind of like a, an array, I think, in the way that you access things. So if it's in the charging state, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to move it to the base position and we're going to energize the base. Otherwise, we are going to go ahead, ooh, that button going over the text. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just something to consider. We're going to move to the star. I don't know if this is going to fix the problem, though, is it? Uh, star ZXQ as well is, is quite awkward to type in on the keyboard, just so you know. So for your tutorial, you could even simplify the name of it and call it like QWERTY or something like that, star QWERTY, because people can type it in easier. Uh, I mean, it could just be a me problem, but just some feedback on that. Uh, we're going to get the position of that, uh, and then we are going to energize uh, the, from the nearest star. Ah, thank you. I am certainly missing a open bracket there. I've been working on an online reference chart for Hades Boons. <gasps> Hades. We, we had a good time with Hades. I played it for quite a while. I didn't play it too much on stream. Uh, I played it a, few, a fair bit on stream, but my, my fiance uh, played for bloody ages on stream as well. Uh, she was trying to complete it fully. I think she did in the end. Um, or to, no, well, fully to an extent. Um, oh, like unlocking all the characters and the story, the full story thing. But we can online reference chat for the Hades Boon. That, that's super useful though. I'm sure there'd be people who'd be interested in using that. Uh, if it's live already, feel free to drop a link to it in chat, Wonderful. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and update the code based on this. So let, no, let's think about what this is doing. So this is basically saying it'll run this every second. So if my energy is at the capacity, I am now in a charging state. Actually, no, hang on. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm in a charging state. Otherwise, if my energy is empty, then I'm in a harvesting state. Okay, so I need to go harvesting. So my state is going to stay as charging until harvesting is true? Yeah, okay, that makes sense, right? Because it's going to remain that. It's not only when it's a capacity. It'll remain that until it gets changed. That makes sense? Uh, so if it's charging, it's going to move to the position. I guess you you could check it. Am I, do I need to move? But you could have another memory thing that says, am I at base, I guess, right? But Okay, cool. That sounds good. Let's update and let's see how that behaves for us then. Uh-oh. Let me copy this in case something's gone wrong as well. Update code? Oh, have I missed out the... Oh, the, this. Yes, I have. Oh, I guess... So, I, some feedback if I'd made that mistake would be nice as well. Uh, oops. Oh, look at this, I am getting... I, I guess it's just from other things that I've written now, I'm getting some form of autocomplete, right? Right, there they hmm. Okay, cool, let's try that. Yeah, nothing is happening. Uh, we need, we, okay, so if rendering uh, crushes, we need to refresh it. Oh, no, no, it, it seemed to work. Okay, oh no, it says it's working. So we're properly harvesting energy from the sun, giving it back to the base. Once your base energy reaches 100, it'll be used to automatically create a new spirit. While you wait for this to happen, feel free to mouse in and zoom around and pan around with your mouse. Okay, so we will just refresh this. Uh, it goes from strings and open files, is it? I see. Yes, I am. I guess I'm too. Uh, uh, what's, what's the right word? I don't want to say spoiled, but from using um, Visual Studio and having autocomplete. 
Uh, but anyway, okay. Uh, we had just written this. Okay, so at, at this point, a new spirit has been born, which is S2. That's fine. Instead of copying the entire code for the other one, you might want to create a loop. And instead of referring to your spirits as S1 and S2, you can use my spirits in an array that contains all of them. Good. Okay, that sounds fine. Write code uh, on your own or copy and replace your entire code with a possible solution. Okay, no, so we, we need to do a loop, but yeah, we don't have any syntax on how to do a loop. So, uh, yeah, I can't remember the syntax. I effectively would guess it would be for uh, var, is it var? Spirit uh, in, is it in? I, it might be my spirits. Uh, we want to go through and chuck this all in that. And then we replace the S1 by spirit. We'll have a look at the syntax in a moment. Find and replace would have been nice, but I didn't want to mess with this site in case it was dynamically in. Um, Pavel, I will I'll look at your question in a moment. It's always nice if you want people to help you to at least say, you know, introduce yourself a little bit. Um, we will, I will read through that in a moment. I'm just going to finish doing what I'm doing first, though. And uh, Nimai, Buzzy, when did you start showing your face? Uh, it was in a, a charity stream in last December. It was the 15, 000, uh, £1,500 pounds, uh, goal that I had to have for face cam for 2021. So, alas, here we go. I normally am not naked up a chin. Uh, I've gone for the 90s new metal beard look. We just kind of have a beard and nothing here. Uh, okay, so. Hello, weird lol as well. Lovely to see you. Uh, let's. Uh, all right, we've got a few things before I mess up, uh, before I forget. We're going to try this in just a sec. We're first going to have a look at Wonderbull's um, Hades Boom chart that they've been working on. <gasps> look at this. It's like... Oh, wow, this is an interesting way of doing it. Crikey. Look at the way this is done. So it's almost like a Path of Exile sort of uh, massive talent tree. So is this connecting the ones that are like are related, like you have to have this in order to unlock another one? That's super cool. So do you click on them? I'm trying to see how this works okay I uh, again I'm only having a brief look at this but yeah it's nice how it shows that they do unlock another way wow man manage to visualize that and do it in such a nice presentable way it's super cool uh, okay so you can choose from here the different ones that you want to have and it fills it in there as well that's really cool uh, I apologize for not having a greater look just because I want to carry on uh, with the review of this game now. But yeah, that's awesome. That seems like it'd be really cool to see you develop that as well. Um, and then we had... Yeah, I'm going to finish doing this. Like, I will come back to your question probably in around 10 minutes or so, Pavel. If, you can keep, if you're keeping the stream up for that long, then um, I will come back to it. I just don't want to lose more time here. Um, okay, so... Um, but this is what I was going to guess. I'm not too sure if I've got a the syntax right. Can someone tell me what the syntax is for loops in JavaScript? Const, uh, sorry, I can see it already. Const spirit of my spirit. So I'm not too sure if it's const because I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be changing it, right? But it's of, is it? Is var okay to do? And then it just it automatically introduces the type, isn't it? Something like that. It has been a long time, Nimai. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Var is okay, I think, is it? Uh, if you ch Oh, let. That's the one. Yeah, let is the bloody thing I was thinking of. Yeah, let is the, the thing they use. Var is ancient. Oh, that's fine. Let's go with that. Okay, so if, if we update the code, what happens here then? Uh, 
Well done, but your spirit, uh, yeah, all your spirits should now autonom uh, autonomously harvest energy. But wait, you're under attack. Oh, crikey. I think that as the rendering stopped, let's refresh this again. It's still under development, this, right? We're getting feedback. Okay, so we've got more of them now. So every time we get up, so we're under attack here, wasn't it? The spirits uh, and the base have a sight property that contains other objects within 400. Okay, that's cool. So we can get a hold of anything that they have uh, access to, I guess. What's stored inside, Sarah, are the IDs, not what the objects themselves. You can access the actual spirit object with spirit's ID. So, is this an enemy spirit? Is that going to be the in the same list? We'd have to check whether it's an enemy, though, before we shoot it, right? One spirit should be enough to deal with the invader. Add this to the end of your code. Okay, what have we got? It says, like, if base.site... So, if the base has an enemy at least one enemy then we're gonna assign uh, okay site has an enemies and a friendlies by the looks of it that looks cool okay so if we, then we want to go ahead and get the enemies the enemy sorry and then we want to go ahead and check if our first one has more than 20 energy then we're gonna label it as an attacker uh, and then if uh, we are the attack uh, labeled as an attacker, meaning we have enough energy, then we're going to move to the position and then we're going to energize them. <gasps> we're going to suck the energy out of them. All right, let's try and do that. Let's try and do that. So uh, it says to do it at the end. So we're going to first off, we're going to say if base dot site dot enemies dot length. So if we have more than anything in there then we know that we have an invader so the invader is going to be equal to that same basically the same thing right so it might be nice to assign that first that's uh but don't worry about it it's fine we can access it twice until i've been working in code where you get called up on inefficiencies can you uh da, 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 da. okay that's fine uh, and then if s1.energy uh, is greater than or equal to 20. So I guess that is like how much we it takes to... I don't know why we've chosen that. That that bit is a bit more confusing. Then we want to go ahead and say memory uh, of s1.id is equal to... Well, we could write attacker. We could write whatever we want, I guess, right? But we've got to put it as a string. Otherwise, it thinks it's a variable, I think, with JavaScript, right? Okay, cool. Oops. Uh, then... Ah! Oh, don't do this to me! Yeah, this this little bug is a shame. I know you can You can click on the copy button. I'm just kind of keen to... I, if it's a coding game, I kind of want to write the code myself, if that makes sense. Well, uh, yeah, there's a bug where it finishes up. It finishes uh, early. Well, well, we'll give that another go now, and I'll copy and paste the code in. Uh, okay, before I do that, let me answer Pavel's question he asked earlier. Hello, I have a job interview assignment to implement a game using Unreal without using blueprints. I only use Unity until now. Should I not use UE5 because lack of tutorials and stay with the ugly interface of UE4? Uh, the interface shouldn't impact what you're going to be doing anyway, right? So um, I'm interested why you're asking the crush not to be blunt but why it is to be blunt but not to be rude uh like what does it matter what it looks like like they're gonna see your game the interface won't change but uh to answer your question more technically uh unreal engine 5 is just unreal engine 4 just with more stuff built on top of it so you can use tutorials for unreal engine 4 for unreal engine 5 but like where things are in your window will just be a bit different but the code underneath the hood is exactly the same there's a couple of extra systems and there's things being built up on top of it, don't get me wrong. But you should still get access to those previous tutorials. They should still be relevant to Unreal Engine 5. With that said, Unreal Engine 5 is less stable. It's a, currently in a beta version. And so um, I would probably just go for Unreal Engine 4 so that you learn from the videos without extra barriers of not being able to understand it. But yeah, you'd be looking at using a C++ uh, a specific variety of C++, uh, the, there's a bunch of macros and special like Unreal only things that you do in it. But um, if this is, hold on, did you say this is for when? Sunday, so you've got a week. Uh, yeah, that you're asking quite a lot of yourself to, to make a game in a completely new engine in, in uh, 
yeah, with, within a week, but that's what I'd say. You are using the interface, so it impacts you. But, like, the ugliness of it, does that... It, I don't know how much it impacts you. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I get it. It's, uh, that's that's fair. Uh, I I have had a little look at Unreal Engine Five, not a vast vast look, if I'm honest with you. Um, but I would say that I I would stick to Unreal Engine Four for stability. And since you're new to it, it means that you can follow the tutorials bit by bit rather than having to figure out oh that's moved to here in this version. Um, I don't worry about the fact that the UI is a bit dated because it, it doesn't change anything other than your experience when you're coding it. But you should be worrying about the coding rather than what it looks like, in my opinion. Um, and cool, if you're making a chess game, that sounds cool. A, a bunch of rules in that. Yep, yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, feel free to, if you're getting stuck or you're trying to work things out as well, you're welcome to come and ask more questions in the future while you're working on that. All right, let, uh, let's give this a go. Let's finish this tutorial, and then we're going to get into a proper game of this. So we're going to go right into the tutorial. We're going to go through it one last time just to get to the last bit. Uh, and we're going to use the... Uh... Okay, this is where it was moving, right? Okay, it's now harvesting energy. We've done this. It's catching up with all of the bits that I've done, I think. Yeah, because I've got that code at the moment. So we've got our charging and, and harvesting, and it should, once this is charged, I think it goes to the next stage. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. So this is how I did mine before. And here it goes back, and when this gets to 100, we should get a new unit, so we just need to go and absorb one more star. I was only being blunt about the UI as well, purely because, um, like, it sounds quite like a job interview. This is serious, like, so that's why I wouldn't be worrying myself with what a UI looks like. Oh yeah, you can zoom in and out and pan around. Oh, okay, so you can see the other player over here. They're doing the same thing. This reminds me a bit of the gathering resources at the start of a game of Command and Conquer, right? Okay, so now that we've got two of them, uh oh, are we under attack? It says we're under attack already, but I don't know if we are. Okay, so we were in the middle of writing this, right? So we're going to chuck this at the end of our code. So we're going to say, if our base... Let's tidy it to our format. <laughs> uh, then we want to go ahead... I, I'm not a big fan of uh, one-liner if statements. Sorry. Forgive me. Uh, and it's not an else. We then want to just see if that was assigned. Uh, unit complete. Building. Okay, there's the enemy coming over. So, we're going to press update. And we're going to hope that when this gets in range, enemy in sight, production paused. Oh, is this going for it now? It is! Look at it, it's draining the energy! Uh. Did that take energy for me to drain from it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it did. Amazing, you should have a solid grasp of the game mechanics. You can always learn more in the documentation. We're going to open that in a new tab. To conclude tutorial, attack the enemy base with all of your spirits by adding this at the end. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, we'll copy this. Uh, oh, no, I pressed shift enter. Uh, down here. Okay, so my spirits, I. So this is, oh, you can do a for loop like this as well. Okay, that's fine. So uh, we want uh, us to move to the enemy base position, and then we want it to energize. Okay, go and attack. All of you. <gasps> look at him go. Okay, let's go and have a look. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Here they come. Menacing. This is a chunkers. A chunky boy can hold up to 90 energy. We don't have much power. You're right. I mean, they have zero power. See, this is what you'd do. You'd probably do a rule like, if I'm high on energy, then I'd go and attack, right? But, so what are they going to do? How are they going to attack? Okay, the, the ones with energy can attack. There they are. <gasps> there we go. We did it. We did it. Okay, so that was the tutorial. We got documentation. We're going to create an account in a second. Have a go at this properly. So this is the, uh, the documentation here. Let's try and... So we have our game board. So 
So zero zero is up here if we ever want a particular position. Yeah, that makes time. Okay, uh, global get invariant. So we have our memory that we can use. Base we can access. We can always access the enemy base as well. There's two stars, A1C and P. Oh no, three stars. Sorry. Uh, and there's an outpost. My spirits you can always get hold of. And there's spirits contains all spirits. Is hang on. Oh, only mine. So this. Uh, access them by their ID. Ah, oh, okay. So you can get hold of all of the. Okay, okay. That's interesting. Uh, sorry. Um, we are lol. Are you heading off? Are you good, sir? Nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. And we'll catch up again soon. Oh, we are lol. Uh, I should. I will say, check my Twitter in uh, in an hour or so. That is all. Thank you. Goodbye. Mystery. Uh, uh, check my Discord. Do you have Discord? Don't do this to me, weird lol. There you go. You have Discord. That works. <laughs> I have that cord. Okay, good. That sounds good to me. Lavely. All right. Uh, and then we have different things about uh, our spirit. We have a position. HP. Last energized. Ooh, the ID of the most energized object. What is that per? Most recently energized. Out of our ones, I guess. Okay. The example's nice here. Okay, they're called friends and structures you can see as well. Okay, cool. And then uh, methods, you can use energize, move, merge. Okay, is that going to make you a larger? Oh, look at that. Okay, interesting. So only the circles have access to that. What is this? It's like racial abilities. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, you've just, uh, you've just mentioned as well. Nice. Okay. Device that allows you to split up the squares. They can jump. Okay. Teleports the spirit to new location up to 300 units away. Explode the triangles can do. Clear itself and doing 10 damage. All right. So you can have a little uh, kamikaze style. You can shout a message and you can set a mark. Okay. okay I wonder if you can access that mark. And then the base has a few things as well. Energy capacity, HP. Okay, so you need energy in order to to keep have health. An outpost kind of had. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, good on you. There's lots to this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make a new account quickly and sign up to this. So let's go and make a new account. Oh, okay, sorry. Um. Uh, we don't want to email, just be reminded that if you forget your password, you need to create a new account. Okay. Okay, let's go. So, now logged in. Brilliant. Uh, that's also good for, like, barriers and that, right? Uh, da, 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 da. so I could now, if I got a new game, I guess, I should be doing this in the other tab. Now, I'll tell you what, we're going to leave the documentation open here. Um, and then we will go start a uh, new game up here. Okay, I'm going to be circles and I'm going to be this color blue. Can I play against a bot, I think, to begin with? I think that would be good, right? Let's go dumb bot so we can just have uh, some time to try and think. There might not be enough time for a re for the real game yet. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. I'm not in a, a huge rush as well because I'm aware the other game I've got isn't massively long. Um, and they're not in chat yet, so I'm quite happy to give this a bit more time. But I, I will have a look at that video towards the, the end. Okay, Misery? Misery? 
All right, so the game starts soon, waiting for us to upload code. Okay, what is, th is this what I had last, right? Okay, so we don't want to go to the enemy. Oh, no, don't go to the enemy base. I don't want that. Come back. Okay, good. Give my base. There we go. We, we should be getting more. Look at look how many of those are. It looks good with the more units that are here. So this is another star. Could we, could we make that a base or anything? I keep trying to middle click or right click to drag around as well, but um, I'm in a web browser. I need to remember that. Okay, so what's the point of that star? What can you do with, with uh, we've got an outpost and we've got a, a, a star there. So let's have a look in the documentation. Like what can we do in the outposts? Control. Okay, so you, you can have control. Does that just give you a way to like hold control there, I guess? So let, let's just say, um, hmm. Uh, how would we do this? Then uh, This is what I like about it, is you need to solve some of the problems. Uh, I, I was just curious about whether it gets to a point where you just copy the same code in every time and then you just tweak one or two things, but that's probably okay. Uh, each star only has a limited amount of energy, so if you want more, you'll need to fight over control of the middle star and the outpost. Okay. So are we... Like a maximum amount of energy, do you mean? Because I'm trying to find, it just seems like it's growing at the moment, right? We keep filling it with more and more, and then it goes out. So we can, we can go to this star to get energy for, oh, this star, this has the energy. My mistake, I was looking at my base. Okay, cool. So I guess, what can we just go through and can we make a, a fleet of them, I guess? Um, let's go ahead and we'll just say, I don't know how to do like a random chance. <laughs> Because uh, the ID is the name of it, isn't it? So I can't do division. I just kind of want to do like a mod, like index mod uh, two sort of thing. Or would it be mod one? Uh, I do not know JavaScript, so it's quite hard for me to guess here. So random chance uh, equals, uh, can someone help me with a random library? <laughs> Random dot, uh, I don't know if it's range or something like that. We want to go from zero to one. Oh, I, pff, I don't know JavaScript. This is difficult without knowing JavaScript. Oops. Okay, so let's get this off here, right? Let's just go JavaScript uh, random function. Does that give you a zero to one? Math dot random. Yeah, zero to one, cool. Okay, so if uh, math.random, does it have to be lowercase? Yeah, it does. Lowercase functions, what is this? Okay, so if we go ahead and do that, that should give us a, a random chance, right? And then we can just say like if or a random chance I don't like that I've named my variable that way as well. It should at least be camel case. Come on, Dan, get some standards in here. So if random chance uh, is going to be greater than 0 0.5, and we only want to run this once, though. Hmm. <laughs> it runs this once per second. That's what's tricky. I, uh, yeah. I feel like it's going to constantly reassign people to new squads this way. But that's part of the problems that we need to kind of get over, right? Um, so if it is greater than that, then we're going to be part of our new squad. So we're going to make a, I guess, what can we assign on the, uh, on our little units? Where are they here? Spirits. So position size, site energized. Okay, so instead we'd have to use that global memory, I guess, right? So we, we could make an array of, like, attack fleet or something like that, for example. Um, how did we do that before this memory thing? Okay, so... So we're giving it... Hmm. We're giving it an ID for each one. 
and we're assigning it a state. Okay, so I guess you could do that as a as a, a way to have like a, a fleet, but it feels like is there is there more? Could we make our own? I guess you could make this a bigger structure inside. Like this might end up being instead of just a a, a string, you might end up having. Oh, but it's already used for this. Actually, we can't override that. So I need to think, how would you, how would we store something that represents what, what, what like their, their team, if you will, or their, their squad? I don't know, can I just add more to the... Yeah, you could, you could add something, right? But I'm trying to think what would be, what to make it different, is it? Oh, okay, so I could add a string to say the team, right? Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that could work. So if we just go memory, um, spirit ID, spirit ID plus, uh, and then we're going to just, maybe we'll do it like that. I know it looks a bit weird syntax, but for me that works at least because the spirit ID is legit. And then we're saying this is the fleet. Let's just call it, uh, fleet ID. Um, and then we need to assign this to, uh, Bravo squad. <laughs> and then, uh, I guess we could have done this as a ternary condition, but it's okay. We'll just go with this for now. Otherwise we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll put them in the alpha squad. Okay. So we also need to think of a, like, ah, you can use the global. You can use, oh, hang on, memory. So in here, we're going to have to have a, if, um, memory dot, uh, has, uh, assigned, assigned fleets, something like that. And then if we're going to check, is it true? I'm guessing it's going to be false by default. So if it's false, we're going to go ahead and do this and assign the teams. We could do that maybe. Oh, we need to get a bit of indentation going on in here. Um, and then at the end of this, we would go ahead and get our memory dot uh, assigned fleets uh, is going to get set to true. So that means it should only happen once because that's our global memory. Um, if it, if the, well, it depends because, yeah, it'd be nice to just have, to be able to run something once. I guess you just need to, if you, can you comment out code, I guess? Yes, you can. So you could, I don't know if you can group comment it out. That would be good. Uh oh, I was hoping undo would work there. Okay, whatever. We'll, we'll do it once. I'm just thinking how we can reassign our team. So this should at least split up our team roughly 50-50. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then what are they doing here? I, at the moment, they're harvesting. They're choosing the, the charging state. That's fine. So then I guess um, we'd want to do something like... So if our... So we're going through everything in our my, in our spirits at the moment, right? So if um, okay, so this is going to represent what their team is. Such a weird way to code. Um, so if the spirit dot id plus uh, fleet id. And let's do that as a string, right? So if this is going to be equal to Bravo, then we're going to, I basically want to try and think, hello there, tro tro tro. And hello there, Mr. Alphras. Thank you for the su subscription, good sir. Uh, anyone just joining us, we are checking out Yara 
Misery11.io, which is a game by Misery11 chat who they submitted for the feedback stream. Uh, anyone interested in submitting your own game in the future, you're welcome to check out the form. Uh, read the information before filling out it. That would be great. Um, oh! <laughs> Oh, well, that's a shame, Mr. Outfrost. I, I don't use any Welsh commands. I won't be redeeming them at, at the moment. Just as a heads up before it happens. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, what I was trying to do here, uh, it's it's a JavaScript coding game where the, the aim of the game is you have stars that you can... There's only three energy left there. That's a shame. I, I wonder why they can't take the last bits. Uh, you have these stars... And you can drain this and the stars of energy and take it to your base. The base, when it gets to the full capacity, you get a new unit. Uh, and we're just trying to do some code to make something happen, which is good. Which is good. Uh, okay. Uh, so if it, if we're on Bravo team, then we're going to check if uh, Sprite Spirit. Sorry. So if the Spirit um, Dart Vision was it? No Sight. Sight dot um what else was in there? Was it when we is it base in there? Uh where's our little So where's the sight thing? Enemy structures. Okay, structures. So how do we access that? Yeah, I don't know how to do this in JavaScript. But I, ba I basically want to say if this doesn't include, like, this star, then you need to go there. I know, very inefficient at first. How dare I? How dare I? If array doesn't include. Ah, okay. So there's an includes, is there? Like that. And then I can go ahead and do star P89. So if, uh, if it includes that, I guess we want to do not includes. So that it would, would it be not to the whole thing? So if, it do, if we can't see it, then we want to go to it. I guess we're going to say now. So we would go ahead and get... Um, how do we get a hold of that star? I'm trying to remember the base. It's not, yeah, we've gotten a hold of base that way. Uh, is there a way for us to... Ah, you can just do spirit.move like we've done before. You can just call... You can access the stars. Okay, so we would say spirit... Uh, well, I guess what we could do is this is just choosing your destination, right? And then we could use the same function to handle it in the end. So let's just go uh, let um, destination uh, home planet or uh, fleet base <laughs> start for now. Let's just call it that, right? And then in here, we're going to... Uh, essentially say oh i don't know if this is going to do it <laughs> uh yeah yeah so we're basically we want to go towards it right i know that it's okay yeah we i don't know how to set it to be like null though just kind of what i want to do because in here then i want to go ahead and set this to be uh star that thing, right? I mean, ultimately, that should be our, our we we can we should just go ahead and do this, and then we can do a, an else. If you're not in Bravo team, then we're gonna your fleet base star is gonna be equal to the home base one, which is star Z X Q. Like that, but in a string. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so they now have their own like bases and then what we want to do is instead of including this we can then check for as part of our thing we can check are we near it if not we need to go to it but I guess no it, it, we can just use our old code now right this should be enough and then we replace any time that it said star where is this is our charging base position otherwise this bit okay so yeah we would now go get our fleet base star oh yeah, no, we wouldn't use just the name of it. We'd actually have to store it as an object, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, we would need to store it as the actual variable or object. Um, this for now. Don't know if we need this yet. Let me just. Okay. Uh. So this should still be fine, but instead of going to, we go to the base or we go here, that's fine. Okay, otherwise, if, there's a little red squiggly here making me think I haven't closed some parentheses somewhere. So I don't like the inconsistency with the semicolons, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and this is just finding an attacker, that's fine. Okay, let's, um, I'm worried something will break, so I'm going to copy this and we'll, we'll update the code. Don't know, it is a console error, which is token JS line 54. Is it like a lack of that? Or is it because I've got, a, I haven't, oh, it might, hold on. Now this is a for loop, that means I've probably got too many of Close can parenthesis. Ah, here, yes, found you. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, is that still still got an error? We have user. Hang on, assigned fleets is not defined. Where's assigned fleets? Ah, here. Memory assigned flight if it's equal false. Uh, have you got to check if it exists yet? Uh, yeah, this, this is where my JavaScript. Oh, I didn't know if you just had bools. What, it needs to be a string, does it? It's been a long time since I touched Java, apologies. No, it's still to, like, I don't want to have to assign it. Oh. Oh, yes, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, that's, sorry, yeah, because otherwise it's looking for a variable of that name. Thank you. Uh oh, don't save like that. Uh, Miss Type of Spirit on line 21. It'd be nice if you highlight the line where there's an error, whatever this is, that'd be nice. Come on. Bravo is not defined. Oh, is it because I haven't used the string yet? Okay, did we assign it as Bravo up here? We did, yeah. Hello there, Hexadonuts. Nice to see you to see you nice. You cannot read property position of undefined uh, on line 50, character 35. Fleet star base is up here. So it's been defined here. It's in scope still. So I guess we would just... It should be get set here, right? But I'm guessing it doesn't know what it is at this point. Twenty three and twenty seven. Oh, I see. I see. So it doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a mistake on my part. Does that still? Okay, now it knows what kind of type it is. Okay, cool. What's happened here? I don't know if it worked, <laughs> but they're all leaving. All of a sudden. But none of them are really going to the new star. 
So I feel like my code didn't work. <laughs> and the way I did it is I don't know how to reassign it. Maybe it's not equal to false to begin with. That's something I need to think about. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could do a block comment out. Because the problem is, if I do like, oh, is assign fleets fault, uh, equals false at the start, then every iteration it's going to do that. So I don't think it's ever getting set. I don't think they're ever getting given us alpha or bravo, so they all get given this home. That's what I feel is happening right now. Uh, yeah, any JavaScript help in the chat with this one? And once we get this little bit working, we'll have a look at that video of like a more in, like a, people who know what they're doing. Oh, so you're saying that we can console.log this to test. You don't think, uh, what, assigning, uh, you can't do it like this, you don't think? Is the star stored in a list that we can access via a key of that by the its name or something? Yeah, I think like having a bit of a you need a bit of JavaScript with this, otherwise it struggles. I don't know how it works, whether that's a reference to it or whether it just copies that data across or what. Uh, I don't, I, I can't remember how J, JS works. Uh, ba, 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 ba. But that's what I feel is maybe happening here. Okay, we can just, I, I guess the point is, are we ever going into... So it'd be a reference with this object, okay. So we can console.log, uh, can we just console the... This. Now, where's our console going to go? Log. Output too long. Uh, I guess we're doing it within the loop. If we just did it once, that would be easier. Nothing. Okay, so that does work. We can't, no, okay, so this works. So I don't know, if, if it doesn't exist, how do you create? Essentially, we just, I just want to do it once where I set it to false. But what will happen is it'll run it every time, and I feel that's like a bit of a frustration, like I need to come up with a system to get around that. Like comment everything out. Just to run, set it to false once. Uh, no, I guess, hold on, we might be able to do, uh, no, no, I don't know how to do it. Okay, if it's undefined, yes, that's what it is, if it's a not, thank you, I can remember what null pointer sort of stuff is. Yes, thank you. That should make a big difference. All right, here we go. No, we crashed it. We crashed it or, or the game just happened to end. Uh -oh. oh no, is this going to show my code still? No, it reached the max game length. What are the chances it got there the moment I got? Mm. I've probably lost all my bloody code now as well, haven't I? No, no, we got it, we got it. So if it's undefined, we're gonna... Oh, no, but now, hang on. We don't want to do this bit. Sugar. Yeah, if I feel like it's hard to have a switch. Like, I might not want to do this to begin with. 
It's also it's not starting in 25 anymore. Hmm. But it is totally like loads of potential. Like you, I, I, you see, I've just got interested in trying to how can I make two different teams and get them to have a base, a different base location, and then using like a variable to kind of store that to allow a, a more generic approach. And you you branch it from storing variables which are accessible globally. That is nice. I, I like I like the concept definitely. Um, but I think for sake of time, I'm gonna have to have a little look at the video you did. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. I, and I think if I was familiar with JavaScript as well, I'd be a bit more confident as well, uh, smashing through there. But this is really cool. Uh, it's really promising. There's a lot a lot of good to it. Let me just have a little look at the the link you dropped in chat earlier. Ah, so it's like a proper replay system. So let me go ahead and drop this in. So downloading the replay now. Okay, cool. So we have the two teams. We have the squares. Okay, so they're all going out at different times. I guess maybe they're using a glow. Oh, hang on. They seem like, are they going different ways? Okay, they're getting just about enough energy to go and take this one. The circle boys are... Okay, they're sending some out, but then it's come back. I wonder why it's doing that. Maybe it wasn't intentional. These stars are filling up. They've got a lot more small units, but the big units are coming over now. So you can speed it up a bit with the button next to the pause button. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. So let's go double the speed then. So these are now coming over to... Oh, wow, the Chunky Boys shot them. I like how after they killed them, I guess it must be based on how much energy they've got. They went back. So the outpost... Ah, oh, you give the outpost energy and then it defends for you. So this is using its energy. It'll try and shoot them all. I like how they all follow that same rule of... I guess that's the player updating their code, right? A defensive go towards them or not. Potentially. So he's just kind of keeping them at bay while they're gathering resources back here. Ah, he's made a nice chain here. Look at this! Look, conveyor belt system, what is this? Ah, uh, look, I'm doing little emotes. So, oh, these boys just need to go and attack, because this, what's this one going to do? You're just letting him build up more resources. So, yeah, it's, I feel like it, th this character has... Oh no, he sent a bunch of more new ones off. I guess you can also just, uh, I guess you can get, like, get the direction of the people you're away and go the opposite direction to them. So it feels like this one's being chased down. What about these up here? He's not going to catch that at the moment. He might get towards the edge. Yeah, they're getting close to the edge of the world, so I wonder what happens here. Okay, running out of space now. Uh-oh. Do they come back in at the... Oh, no, it keeps going. Okay, well, let's go... Uh-oh, okay, chunky boys. Sticking together. I like how... So do they just balance each other's energy here? So they're like, okay, if I've got more than 50, but one of my people in my site has uh, less than 10, then let's give them some of my energy. That's pretty cool. Uh, the teleport system is pretty interesting as well. So that's the, the square special ability. The squares look stronger here. The circles can merge as well. We haven't seen any merging from the circles yet. Maybe they will now. But I think it'd be hard to control. Okay, so the outpost is dead. Alright, let's, let's see how this plays out, shall we? I think there's definite limitations, but I think those limitations are what lets you work like it's fine because that's what games are right you you optimize your decisions within a set of constraints uh it's trying to set up a little conveyor belt system again at the moment by the looks of it here we go look at that i love that oh they've done the same as well almost anyway okay so these are starting to actually get a load of units now. I'd start to be a bit concerned about them. They're taking control of the outpost. They're filling it with energy, which gives them control of this middle section as well. The stars... Oh, do they have infinite energy? Okay, they seem to still have a load of energy. The outpost has a heck of a range, eh? 
Alrighty, that's fine, that's fine. It looks like they're going towards the base now. Holy... Holy cow, I think they just won, did they? I think that was the last frame of the game. Okay, that is really interesting, the type of behavior you can kind of get from it, right? And I really like that, I don't, yeah, you can scrub through to the different ticks. I, it's super, it's, I like, I mean, it's clever. It's original from my perspective. There's hints of like different genres of games, but the restrictions of you having to code it, and the restrictions of having that, like everything has to go in that one code frame. The, the only thing I feel at the moment with some of the code is that like I would have like a notepad document open with loads of different code snippets that I'm code copying and pasting in. And I feel like having a way to kind of block comment things out would be a good, I shouldn't have to copy and paste into an external program. Um, I'm not too sure the an easy way to, to implement it, but I think that would be nice because that allows you to maybe just run like a single thing and then you can uncomment stuff and bring it in and it's a bit more of a kind of a, I don't know, you feel like you're, you're altering the code a bit more, but it'd be interesting to see like the code. I don't know, can you actually look at on the replay? Can you have a look at the actual code as well? Or is that top secret? Oh, yeah, the chunky boys. Yeah, so the, if I remember, the base needs a lot more energy to produce a new a unit. Yeah, 25 here, whereas this is 400. Yeah, it is really nice to look at, isn't it? Oh, that, that's awesome. Okay, let, uh, let's answer some questions. I'm going to just take a, a very quick uh, moment to just stretch my legs and we'll come back. And these are the type of questions we want to answer uh, about the game then. So open source, not so much for your, I guess you mean open source for the players there, right? In terms of they get to see what each other's have coded, each other has coded. I guess they, they could tick a box and say, do you want to share this with whoever you're going against? But I guess if someone comes up with a an idea themselves of, oh, this is a cool strategy, then they may not want to share it, right? So uh, yeah, I think forcing it is maybe not the right way. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I will be back in just a moment. Uh, and we'll check up the questions in the meantime. Okay, we are back. Artifacts, uh, no problem. 
Uh, it was good to have you here, and I'm glad you took an interest in the game at least. And yeah, do feel free to join the Discord of um, Mr. Lev. It's all on the web page if you're interested in checking it out sometime when you're allowed to play rather than while you're at work. Um, but okay, so uh, let's try and talk about some of the questions then. So, first off, accessibility. Are there barriers that hold the player back from experiencing the game? Um, first, let's compliment the good things that were good. Uh, I really like that on the main page, you could do a tutorial. Uh, it tells you what it is. This is a tutorial where you don't need to sign up. Even when you do sign up, you don't need to do email verification. You don't need to give any personal data. That was really good. Uh, you allow the player to copy and paste code in, which gets rid of the, the barrier of people who aren't used to writing code or if they haven't got time and they don't want to be copying out all the code. They just want to get straight into it. I think that was really good. So uh, kudos to those. They were very good decisions in my opinion. Uh, in terms of things that actually do impact it in a negative sense then, I guess the... the it's, it's maybe not negative, but it's just part of it is that you kind of need to know JavaScript um, and also some of the editor kind of tools, um, I guess, like things like auto completing and stuff like that. That might be a barrier to some people if they're, they're finding it a bit clunky compared to their normal day to day programming. But it, it's not the end of the world, that latter one there. Um, but I, I, I do feel that. In order to be creative in this, you need to know what's possible in JavaScript. So it's definitely, you're limiting your audience there, but I think that's totally fine. It's an it's a kind of a niche game based on people who have a, a base understanding of JavaScript, hopefully, at least coding. Uh, and then they can do, what I, like, you can Google, like, the actual syntax of these little things. I also think the fact that you have documentation uh, to, to outline all the different functions that are available on the game kind of objects that you set up. I think that's one that's lovely. That's, that's the sort of stuff you need. So you, that gives people a ch like the ability to explore and try and figure things out themselves. So you, you're basically giving them a tool, a toolbox and you're saying like, do what you can with it. And I think people enjoy that creativity and it encourages people to try and, oh, okay. So I have access to this. What could I do with that? And you can build up these complex behaviors. I'm sure just from you know, build, building the connections between these different pieces of data. Um, yeah, so I, I think that'd be useful. Uh, one thing I'd say from my point of view is, as I've mentioned it a few times while playing, is I found it a bit challenging to, because it constantly runs once every second, that it, it, it feels, I don't know whether it'd be nice if you just had a, like an on begin uh, or on code updated and it happens once and then you have a, on tick function and in that tick function is where your loop is so if you had two functions uh that you could define and uh, that might or maybe you would have one as an, an end as well i'm not too sure but that might give you a bit of a, a, a people a way to control things in a different way but maybe you don't want that maybe you want to put that restriction on that it has to be in a loop and that, that's so totally fine too uh, the community has made ports and wasm i don't know what wasm is uh, people can now also play in rust or c plus plus need to add that to the home page oh that is cool lovely that's the thing i work in c plus plus but i also i work in unreal c plus plus so my base cpp knowledge is pretty crap but ah web assembly thank you thank you that makes sense unfortunately asmr should be like <laughs> It should be assembly, right? But it's almost like ASMR these days when I see those letters combined. <laughs> Thank you for explaining. Uh, okay, um, so that was point one. Let's have a look at uh, the next one. Gameplay. What is the gameplay loop? What make players want to play your game? The challenge, balance, experience. So I think w one thing to, to start is I feel like anytime you want to add your own new behavior, like me trying to assign into a fleet, I feel like a game has started and I'm there figuring out my code for a while. So... I don't know. I don't know the solution to it. That that that, that I feel like I'm accumulating like a million different units by the time I finish writing my code. I don't know whether there could be like a pause uh, that you can do when you're playing against a bot. Maybe not in a real game. That's fine. But just as a, a means for you to kind of maybe you want to go. Okay, everything stop. And then if I change the code to do this, would this then change that? And that gives people maybe that control over. Uh, trying to to change something at, when they see something in the game. They can react to it. That might be an idea, especially if they're still figuring out the game. But the gameplay loop here is um, it's a versus game, right? There's nice, there's bots there, but the gameplay loop is to develop strategies 
to explore the toolbox that you've got to, to develop behaviors. There's different uh, unit types with different abilities, so you can build different strategies for the different unit types, which I think is cool. Um, and I think that uh, in terms of playing against other players, I think any any game where there's a competitive edge, uh, where you're competing against other players, has that horribly addictive let's play again. Because either you keep winning, or you're like, oh, I'll win next time. And it's it's like that one more game mentality. And it can lead to some, some very unenjoyable game sessions in multiplayer when you just keep playing over and over and over and you're not winning. Um, but uh, it, it does prove to be something that's, that's quite a, a successful formula in getting people to play. So I think that's good in terms of gameplay as well. Um, I, I I have some concerns. Oh, look at the look at the sassy chat. Thank you, Hexadonut. I'm terrible at games. I'm not actually terrible at games, but I'm not what I used to be. Old man Dan, eh? Uh, Mega, how you doing as well? I will always win next time. Oh, Mega, you're meant to be good at games, though. Maybe it's the people you play with that's holding you back, right? Maybe that's the problem. Bizarro, hello there. Lovely to see you. Uh, anyone who's just joined us, by the way, if you, if you haven't been here the whole time, we've been playing this really cool web game, uh, which was done by Misery Lev. Here it is in chat. Uh, you can go and play it now if you want, but essentially, uh, you will just, uh, you, you code using JavaScript, basic JavaScript, you don't need to know the depth of it. Uh, you basically will, oh, I kind of guess a medium bot, which isn't a good idea. You write code to control how your, uh, how your units will behave. Um, so here's my base, here's my units. Uh oh, I've got a console error in my code. Spirit on line 15. Damn it, I, I rushed. Spirit, there you go. Uh, that'll be spirits as well. Oh, no, 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 no. Spirit is fine there. Okay, what if we update that? Is that going to work for me now? Okay, there we go. <laughs> so you have these units. These units will go to your base and they will charge it with the energy that they have. And then there's different stars that you can go and get new energy from. And the idea is when your base gets full of its energy capacity, you get a new unit. Different units work in different ways. You can also tell them to go and attack, or you can go to these middle points as an extra staff of resources, or as an outpost that when you charge it, it'll attack the enemy with any energy that you charge it with. See, my code, however, is very simple. All they do is just go back and forth, back and forth. Whereas the enemy AI has sent a, a, a bunch of them over to try and attack my planet. Um, or my, my base and the idea is that you make changes to your code as you play so I've got something in here that says if there's an enemy in range then we just send one <laughs> one person to it defend uh, or the, the first one in the array I think so these are attacking my base slowly and then they have some code to not just go for my base they go for my they go for my star they go for my units the bullies Oh, they don't have any energy. So they've gone to look for the nearest star to get energy. And they use that energy to uh, attack my units. And then they'll go back to this to attack. So it's kind of like an emergent behavior based on how you code it. But um, yeah, once you get good and really think about the strategizing, and if you're familiar with JavaScript as well, you can you could manually change things. So this code will be executed like once a second or something along those lines. That's the kind of thing that we're, we, we've been looking at today. So we, we're just getting to the gameplay element of it. And we're talking about it. I think, um, yeah, I'd be I, one thing I'd be cautious of is whether there's just going to be like master plans, whether there's just a specific route that is just code that is just going to be optimal. And then you'd need to make your map more dynamic in order to mean that certain code won't always work. You'd need to change the name of the stars, maybe, or uh, a bit more than just that, but the position of them, perhaps... Um, if world events could happen and that allow people to have to react to it and that they can benefit from world events, I think that would be a, a good feature as well. Audio and visual then. Um, yeah, there, there's no audio or it was muted, but I think it was there was no audio to it. And that, that's okay. That's not a problem. So let's talk about the visual side of things. Uh, the, the, we said right at the start, first impression is it's very simple, but it's simple done well. And I think there's a difference between someone drawing some crap stuff in paint. Uh, let's say drawing 20 pixels in paint and it looks crap, versus 20 pixels of these nice solid shapes in nice uh, kind of pastel -y sort of pleasant colors, soft colors, 
uh, with with intentional, just solid shapes that people, geometric shapes that people are familiar with. Uh, I think I think his stylized the fonts good, the, the the style of the layout of the page, the way that the stars and the way that they drain energy and stuff like that. It's quite satisfying to look at. So I think the simple style really works. Um, audio, whether audio can be used, I'd be, I can't think off the top of my head, but it would be interesting whether you can use audio, not just as a, like, oh, an enemy's been shot, uh, but more of a, like, to give information to the player, because quite often we only rely on visuals, right, through just looking at the screen, and that's where audio can add that extra layer of, you can convey information with audio too. Uh, some pew pew noises could be good, but can you imagine when there's a thousand, well, maybe not a thousand, fifty versus fifty, it would be very pew pew, right? Uh, I would like to see, uh, ah, that's interesting. I'd like to see the code broken into modules, like base code versus unit code. Yeah, there's lots of, I gave a suggestion earlier as well about how the code could be changed. So yeah, that's a good suggestion. I'm not saying it's definitely going to work, but it's definitely something to think about, isn't it? Uh, nice to see you, Coach Carter. Um, okay, player experience then. Is the game fun or engaging? So right now, I don't know whether I'd call it fun. I think I've had a fun time though, checking it out. But it's one of those, I think engaging is the right word for it. It's for a certain audience of people who enjoy coding, who enjoy this kind of creativity through coding. Um, and so I think it definitely is engaging. And especially when you start realizing, oh, I can build something more complex. It's very satisfying, uh, especially when you can then show that off against someone else in a battle and be victorious. I think that's super kind of engaging in that regard. Um, it isn't an original experience from my perspective that the game style you have a, a bit of kind of command and conquer as I said earlier you gather resources you use it to produce units and then you you need to decide when are we going to take our units to attack it's a simplified version of that in a sense but I think um, I, I think it's original in, in, the, in the implementation the way that you actually give your units orders. Um, and I, I respect a lot that you've, you've tried to make different kind of r races as you would typically have in these games um, of, of kind of um, units that you command and that they have certain methods that are only available to certain shapes. And then finally, future development. Areas of strength, areas of improvement, who'd be interested? So yeah, I think it's a niche audience, as we've said before, but I think it's definitely a, a big audience. There's a ton of coders. Um, and I, I think there, there tends to be a uh a kind of correlation between people who code and people who actually like games in in some shape or form as well so i think you've got a decent audience uh to kind of target there um and and i think the idea is super innovative it is it's made me think oh what could i do with that it made me if, if i could code a bit more comp uh competently in javascript i i think i would probably be more interested in carrying on checking out and trying to work out if what i could do, actually do with this um, I think I don't know whether you plan to expand the maps, whether you expand to uh, plan to expand the kind of the way that you write the code, whether you you have like a, an entry function and a tick function, or whether you have different code modules with different units. Uh, how, however, you'd plan to do that. I don't know what your future plans are for it, um, but I, feel free to share in the chat if you do have any ideas where you want this to go. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't actually. I mean, it, it could be complete as it is. I just I I think it would suffer from the same map, the same layout each time. Yes, you have that in League of Legends, but when it's automated units, I feel it, it's not going to be the same result each time because it depends on your opposition, but I feel like there, there would be some optimal way to play. And then you're just forced on, you're not writing code each time, then you're just copying in the same formula. So Misery Lev says, I want to allow connecting a uh, local folder, GitHub, just connecting your local IDE. Oh, okay. So what? So it reads you. Do you upload the code then to GitHub, and it's reading from that page when it updates or something? Or that that yeah, I guess that would be good for people rather than simulating a, a proper IDE within the browser, right? Uh, does anyone else in chat have any feedback on the game from what they've seen? Do feel free to share. Uh, but we are going to move on to the second game of the day uh, in just a moment. So do feel free to uh, ask any questions or give any feedback now before we do move on. And again, if you're interested in checking it out, the link to it is in chat. The developer, uh, Misery Lev, is in chat as well. You're welcome to, to follow up with any questions to those during the stream. But okay, well, we, we've, we've spent a good hour and a half on that game, which is quite a long time. Uh, but I did say uh, the other developer isn't in chat at the moment, so I was happy to give this a bit more time. And it seemed a game that needed a bit more 
uh, time as well. So um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting one for me. I was happy to give it a go. Uh, Misery Love says that they are uh, more like, uh, sorry, these are more like few different options, but yeah, any in-game editor would be just for the beginning to clunk. Right, I, sorry, I get what you mean. It's tricky because the, it's the accessibility then, though, isn't it, Misery Left? The fact that I can do it in editor, uh, in a browser, without anything else is great. If I then have to connect to GitHub, if I then have to have an IDE, you're adding barriers to it. And I would say that there's something like, there's potential here in the same way that they use code to educate with things like code combat and things like that. I think, you know, a, a game like this with a very limited set of rules could be an interesting way for younger people or, or adults who are looking to learn to to kind of learn because you have a set problem you have a set bunch of tools and you you don't need massively complicated java uh, like code for it so i think um yeah it, it could be interesting from a from an education perspective as well in my opinion uh no it's a pleasure to to play it thank you very much i hope you've got some valid feedback that helps you continue with development with this game I appreciate you submitting it and hanging out in the stream and we will move on to our second game for the day then and our second game if I get rid of my JavaScript Google searches, we do not need those anymore. Uh, the second game uh, we are playing is going to be called Attack of the Brick God. <laughs> yes, you heard it here. Okay, so Attack of the Brick God, let's have a look. So this is a, a Doom-inspired game with voxel art style. You stop the Brick God from taking over the galaxy. All right, that's fine. So how long has he been in development? Uh, it's been thought of a year ago, but development started uh, in April. Okay, so that's some three months ago. They're working on their own. And they say that, how long do we need to play until you leave the base? So I, I'm guessing the base is going to be like the area that we're in. So I did briefly install this earlier to get a little screenshot. So this is, it's kind of like, you can see this is like a wall. These are walls. This is an enemy. So the enemies are like 3D, which is a bit different to Doom. But uh, yeah, the environment is lovely. Um, I'm looking forward to us having a look at this now. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I did this last time. I did this last time. So I was reading out just info from the sheet. You haven't really missed anything. Hello there, Lynx. You are there. Hello. So this is the game of... Links of uh, Andai. Hello there. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing good. Uh, we're going to be checking out this game. I downloaded it earlier. So let me just go ahead and open this up. Uh, I'm not too sure if I can go full screen. So we may need to just minimize stuff behind. Uh, can, I, can I stretch the window? Oh, it does let me do that. Okay. I, I don't want to mess with the aspect ratio too much. Oh, it doesn't. Hmm. We'll see if the UI messes up if I do that. If not, we can restart it. So the first thing um, I'm going to talk about first impressions. So the first thing I wanted to mention to you is if you want random people to check out your game, chuck some screenshots on this page. Um, like you've written information about it, but like if I'm just a normal person browsing, browsing itch.io and I see this game, there's no thumbnail for it. There's no pictures for it. And you've got a visually impressive game, in my opinion. Uh, and, and so like you should show that off. You should try and draw people in with those with the fact that you've got something that looks pretty cool. Uh, you've said that it's inspired by Doom. And so, I, I mean, you've got an audience of people who will, will f be familiar with that kind of visual style. Um, so that's one thing I'd recommend. Uh, I know it's early in development, so like title screen and all that jazz isn't something to, to expect here, so that's fine. We've got a start button. Now, one thing I noticed when I booted it up earlier to take a screenshot is this loading takes ages, absolutely ages. Uh, and so I think that is something long term, if you were to finish this project, uh, that you would maybe need to look into a way where you don't load everything, that you can break your map into maybe like chunks. So if you imagine you've got one big map this size, yeah, uh, and this is your world, if you were to split that into like six segments, one across and two uh, vertically, if whichever segment the player is in, you could just load that one. Or you can split it into many segments and you can say, okay, load the one the player is in and the eight, uh, how many? 
yeah, the eight segments around the player. That's one thing you could do. You could kind of split it up into zones. That could be a way to optimize things. Or it could just be the way that you're loading objects as well. I'm not familiar with um, Godot or the kind of systems you use to load assets. You might be able to load things at runtime, stream them in instead of loading it or when you don't need them yet. But um, if I keep it in mind of like you want people to access your game and play it, the fact I've got to wait probably around a minute and a half for it to load when I have no idea what it's going to look like yet, uh, might put some people off. So just something to be uh, aware of, I would say. Uh, Ash says that they love a good retro FPS. So what I like Doom, I really like Doom, but the weird thing about Doom that we sometimes forget is like, there's no jumping, there's no aiming up and down. <laughs> so it's just like left and right aiming, isn't it? Which is something that uh, I guess we're not really used to anymore. Uh, this game doesn't have just left and right aiming, but it, it was something that was really interesting about the original Doom. And if you play it these days, days you do notice, oh, this is a bit odd, actually. But we're almost there. 90%, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, boom, there we go, there's music, can you hear that? It's really dark, so I, I think, oh, there's an enemy, okay, so instantly, it's pretty cool visual style, like I said earlier, right? It might be a little bit loud, don't know if I've got options, so let me just try and get down to the uh, mixer and turn it down here. Music's cool though. That probably sounds about right. Uh, you say my levels are so small, I had to, I have to artificially slow down the loading screen so that it's time to read the tips. <laughs> yeah, I've always had that in my games as well. <laughs> okay, so first impressions is one, it's lovely, smooth, three D. Uh, like I guess the you have an element of darkness. I was trying to work out, is it just? Do I have a flashlight or is it just a star? But you can see I do have a flashlight. So my, it's a very dark environment and that is very kind of doomish, right? So as I move around, uh, I would say the, the gun animation is a bit intense as you're moving around. The crosshair is nice, by the way. Uh, let's. The animation when you shoot is really good. I'm wondering, is that my arm holding it? It could be. Yes, okay, so I have like blue hands and a, a black outfit or something like that on, or black sleeves, or maybe along those lines. You can change weapons with the keys in the scroll wheel. Holy cow. Okay, it's almost too dark to see. Okay, so that's two, that's three. Okay, so I just have the three, so what's this one do? Okay, that's a rapid one. This is like a shotgun. That's pretty awesome. And then this is my pistol. Okay. Oh, it's starting to go... Uh-oh. Okay, it's starting to run poorly for me now. All of a sudden. I'm not too sure why that is. I'm hoping there's not like a, a memory leak or something. But yeah, the, the frame rate has gone... has really tanked all of a sudden. Can you see... You see how it's looking on stream. Yeah, it, it, it's running pretty bad all of a sudden. I don't know if you have any recommendations other than relaunching it. So you fix it on the next version. Uh, I downloaded the version for this earlier. Is the next version... Oh yeah, I can't see bullets. I think that might be part of the problem. Okay, maybe if I die, it'll fix. Let's just get killed and see what happens. Let's just not use the... What What causes that issue? Yeah, okay, we're back to smooth mode again. Okay, so you can jump as well. It's a bit of a floaty jump. It feels good when you land. There's a bit of like a knee bounce up to that right level. But yeah, so the, 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 uh, the gun bouncing around is... Oh my gosh. The reload animation is cool, the shooting animation is cool. The gun bouncing around is a bit vi graphic. I think it's because it's such a dark game and the gun on your hand is like bright blue. 
Okay, can we go through here? Is there a use button? I'm pressing E or F. Doesn't seem so. Okay. That's fine. So I'm not too sure if we can get through doors. There was key card system in Doom. I remember that much. Okay, there's another enemy there. Let's go shotgun. Ha <laughs> ha! That felt good. Okay, the, we just came through that corridor. Ah! <laughs> the darkness is great. It genuinely is. Because, like, I didn't see that enemy on the right because of my, like, my very narrow field of vision due to the darkness. I'd almost like if you had to charge, like, you had a rechargeable light. So you had to turn it off sometimes. Okay, let's reload. Okay, so there's a door at the back. And then there's just a big wall here by the looks of it. I don't think we do anything there. Okay, let's go. Let's look around. Activate generator. I don't know what the generator is, good sir. Was it in here? Yeah, uh... What is my activate button? One thing I'd say is this source of light, this this circle here doesn't quite fit in with the aesthetics. I, um, I don't know how you can fix that particularly, but just wanted to shit. Okay, let's carry on looking around then. Little animations are cool there. Oh my gosh. Horror. The placement of enemies is good. I do, I do, I, it's not like you just see them all and they're easy to shoot. Like, they do come at you as well, which feels good. Okay, that looks like a long old corridor. Let's go back here. We'll come back to that long place in a bit. I feel like we might have been this way already. Oh, crikey. Is this the start room? Yes, this is the start room. Okay, so I went, uh, didn't go this way initially. So now we are going this way. This should take us back to the other place. If we can go left here. Oh, okay, we found stairs. What the? Baby ones. Okay, so one thing I'd say to you, Links of uh, Undying, is I appreciate you saying go to the uh, generator room. For me, all of the rooms kind of look the same at the moment. So we, I'll, I'll go back to roughly where I think I was, but just try and uh, what, what I'm trying to say to you is like from a player experience, this is the only room I recognize. The rest of them kind of look similar. I'm trying to keep an idea. Maybe like a map would be nice. No, there's no map or anything on tab. So we went down this way. I remember this. And then we... We had this room. Okay, this might be the generator. I don't know. Okay, red pipes. Is this the gener? I don't know. There's pipes. That's different, right? Maybe it's down this corridor. This is the one where I went back. Okay, let's let's just go down this way. Good noise. The sound effect when you jump is good. Trying to work out like what the creatures are meant to be. Is that their eye? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what they are. Is it like bones and blood? It'd be nice if there were some impacts on the enemies as well. At the moment, it feels like my bullets are just going through them, even though I know it's hitting them. Like they look like <laughs> gingerbread men. Uh, it's, it's something creepy about. I uh, like the, the the animations, the length of their arms as well. The way they come at you is pretty cool. Sometimes I feel like I can shoot really fast with this, right? But then sometimes it feels like it doesn't shoot as well. So there's something about the responsivity. Is that a word? Of the gun. Okay, this is the reactor, I'm guessing. Oh, E to activate. Oh, the lights are on. Yeah, oh my gosh, we jump really high. I get, are we in space or something? The amount we jump? Okay, so the reactor's on. That means that... Uh-oh. No! <laughs> okay, so... Level design, 101. Don't make places where you can get stuck. 
because I don't think I can die. Is there a shortcut to restart or anything without restarting the whole game? Like a, sh a little secret key or anything like that you've got in here. No, don't, don't be sorry about it, honestly. You're, like, you're, you're, you're developing this game. You, sh you shouldn't have to go through and test that people can't fall into gaps yet. But um, it's a shame because it takes a while to load the game. All right, let's, uh, I'll F4 it. There's no escape menu either. Let's give this a go. We're going to have a bit of another load time. That's okay. So I should take this opportunity while we're loading. Let's get this load bar started. To uh, officially announce that um, we will be having the Honest Jam number two. Um, let's tweet it. It's fresh. Hot off the prep. What? Why did it open a new tab? What? <laughs> what? Did it actually tweet it or not? Okay, it did tweet it, but then it just went back to an empty page. Absolutely weird. Okay, so uh, we have an, an announcement uh, that the second edition of Honest Jam kicks off. Ah, oh, kicks in. Damn it. We need to edit this. <laughs> Quickly, delete the tweet, edit, delete, damn it. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's a typo in there. Okay, so we need to start again. This is fine. Everything is fine. All right, we can still use our megaphone. Okay, so second edition of Honest Jam kicks off in under two weeks. Maybe we should just say. I, I still I feel that doesn't the phrasing of that isn't so great anymore. Um, July thirty first. Let's just say that. There you go. Uh, the honest jam is designed to be a relaxed game jam with a supportive community where people challenge themselves to create and learn at a pace that suits their own schedules. And then there's a. Oh. Can we fit in sign up? No. Maybe? No. Eh, classic Twitter. There we go. Pow. Tweet. Right, let's try that. We're going for it again. F ignore the first one. No, I forgot the picture this time. Ah. Oh, I I this this frustrates me. I'm terrible at this. Start again. Shh. You didn't see that tweet either. Okay. This is going in. Okay. The game has finished loading, which is positive. We've got to make sure we don't get killed. Okay. Wait. Okay. We're alive. That's fine. Oh, this is such a pain. <laughs> uh, I'm so good at social media. Megaphone. Okay. Announcement. I don't even know if we need a space. That's fine. Kicks off July 31st. Uh, it may take some time. The understand is designed to be a last game. I support community where people are challenged. Where people challenge themselves to... Where people are challenged to... No. I like that better because uh, you challenge yourselves to create and learn at a pace that suits their own schedules. Sign up. We need to get the link to it. Pow, pow, pow. There. And then we need to get a picture that I made with all the info on it that I forgot to tweet. Right. Does this, is this fine? Is this fine? We're going, I'm not even reading it. We're going for it. Right. Take three. Okay. We've got some info. This is the one. No, don't delete this one. <laughs> I, just, I wanted to share it. Okay. There we go. Now, if you want to be a nice nice follower, you're welcome to go and press uh, heart or whatever on that. But yeah, it will be on the 31st. That's a Saturday. So at noon on Saturday, I'll announce the theme. And then you can work on it Saturday and Sunday if you want. And then you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well. And then Saturday, Sunday to finish it off uh, and then Sunday night is where we put in the games so it's just a little bit over a week two weekends one week of evenings if you're a working person at the moment 
Uh, and yeah, uh, you can do as little or as much as you want. So thank you people for uh, giving it likes. I do appreciate it. I'm just gonna put this on the uh, on my Discord quickly in the announcement section as well. Kapow. There we go. So that is shared. It kicks off on your birthday and hello Irish John Gates. How lovely to see you. Well, what better birthday gift could you ask for other than an invitation to the Honest Jam number two, huh? What more could you ask for? As if you're not busy with your own project. It's all good. Right, there we go. A little announcement on that anyway. So we will be starting it. We're not going to be raising money this time. Um, I haven't got the week off of work. I need to keep my holiday days because I'm getting married this year. And my fiance's moving in and other staff as well. So it's nice, it's relaxed. I'm just going to be working on it casually, but hopefully I'll get more of a game than I did during the last game jam at least. But yeah, okay, let's go back to the game. Uh, we're giving feedback on the game. We've played one game already uh, and we're on to the second game. You can check out the second game. The link is in the chat. Uh, indeed, to the wonderful and the beautiful Elisha Griffin. Uh, her visa's approved. She'll be over here in less than a month now. Um, and then, yeah, we're, we're scheduled to get married uh, later in the year, which would be lovely. Uh, right, so we're playing Attack of the Brick God. It's inspired by Doom. We played it a moment ago, but we got stuck. <laughs> uh, I think the game can be maximized fine. So we're gonna... Uh-oh. Oh, now it doesn't let me. It let me do it before. Can we stretch it? Mmm! Uh, alt enter? No. Windows, uh, yeah, that could work actually. No. No. Yeah, I could change it before the. It's like the game has captured my mouse, I think. F11? Nope. I could restart it, but it takes a while to restart. That's the problem. I tell you what, uh. Alt F4, well, that closes it, Bizarro. How dare you? How dare you? Alright, how tiny is it? Pretty tiny. It's all right. Right, we're gonna we're gonna play it this way because it, it it literally takes around two minutes to load. So we're just gonna we're gonna try and get to where we did before. So uh, it's really cool looking game. Uh, it, it's kind of the, the dark element of it. I did really like, although we did just find a way to turn on the lights. We've got uh, various guns. We've got a pistol. We've got a shotgun. And we've got like an automatic spraying gun. We did get some issues after using that gun, so I'm gonna avoid using that gun. But I will use the shotgun when needed. Um. Yeah, the music for the game is cool. The sounds, the animations are cool. Uh, I was saying that I find that like the hand animation is a bit too much in your face, considering it's a dark game as well. Uh, you can jump as well. It's quite a floaty jump. It, I, I I asked, are we in space? Because of the so it does feel if that's the intent, that's totally cool. But make sure that it is the intent. If that's what we want. Uh, and then we found this room where there was a generator. And now we have the lights on. And it's great atmosphere, the lighting in this. Because because you made the game look good in darkness. It really looks like nice and rich and light. Look at the reflections and everything. It looks super lovely. Okay, so let's go ahead and carry on where we were. We, we haven't seen many enemies this time through. Uh, the enemies are cool in it. Uh, it seems like there's some... Uh, some decent kind of uh, AI in it in terms of the way that they approach you. And the animations look pretty cool as well. I say AI, I, I, no, I'm saying it looks quite natural how they attack you, I would say at least. And the positioning of the enemies has been pretty good as well. Okay, so this is our main room that we started in, I think, right? So we have two... Oh, there's another door down here, was there? I didn't. I don't think we saw this door earlier, did we? Oh, there were stairs earlier, actually. Let's try and find those stairs again. So we went down there last time. Let's go down this way this time. Is it here? Uh, either I need a map or a compass. Oh, we found the stairs. Where are the enemies at? Okay, we're going up again. There were loads of enemies last time. There's a bug where enemies don't spawn. <laughs> Gosh darn it. All right, we're giving it one more time. And we're gonna maximize it before we play it this time. So before we play it, pow, start. 
So this is why I was hesitant to restart last time is the uh, it, there's a bit of a loading time on this. But it's okay, it's not a problem. We've got a bit of time. So uh, I'll take this opportunity then uh, to links ask yourself then what is um what's your your aim and your end goal with the game then at the moment? Uh are you hoping to to get like a demo kind of version out of it or are you looking to try and get a like do a whole full fledged game from this? And don't be sorry about it. It's fine. It's part of it's part of demos and that that there's going to be little bugs. It is ideal if there isn't because it means I can spend more time actually playing it and giving you feedback, you know. But it, it happens, man. Don't don't feel bad about it. I don't feel uh, any dev particularly wants any bugs in their code, do they? But it happens. Roo roo, you can get you can get Welsh while we're waiting for the loading part. Roo roo, deal can vow them to know the old girl coming from Reich. My neighbor Ashland for Nayashi are in a breed on my roo roo with the govern and Danova. Ah, kids, you get a knee aid you aros am a barama. So, the money, the money. I only just had a come like with the aros, your bar glass, lenhui, with the nitia. Oistega can't now, Mahon and Kafrois. Mahon and Kafrois down, Ruru, Nadoitin Dow, Nadoitin Dow. Tin never a better on Dow, Sanguibo de Vortin Dow. On now for Titi Tuppy for fifty day, Tani Vasha, Duruti and Dow. Hm. Then our, uh, then our question, Mueti Doral, our Hinnebreed, Uthni Arasir Bar Marlenwe. Okay, the bar is full. <laughs> you do not know what I said. Okay. We're in game. Oh no. What? Now it's not capturing my mouse at all. No! I can't. It's not capturing the mouse. It's like it hasn't got focus. Oh, is it, it could be because I got, I got a controller. Okay, the controller works. We'll use the controller. It maybe it was uh, reading from the controller. We had an issue with the controller being plugged in before as well. It, it actually handles really nice with the controller. Okay, good. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there, chat. So we're gonna go and find the generator, and the enemies are a really cool part of this. So uh, I'm, oh, it's important that we play through with enemies, right? Okay. There they are, see? Hey, look at him! Look at a cute little long arm boy! What you after? We're gonna. How do we switch? Shotgun! Pow! Uh, do you know what? I just guessed what change weapon was, and it was the right button. So, really nice um, uh, button choice for the controller. Yeah, uh, you, you, the buttons do what I expect them to do, so. Uh oh. Yeah, just as I said earlier, some, some impact details when you shoot them. Like, on their body would be a great addition. Be yeah, just so, just so I know that I've shot them. Uh-oh. No! No one wants to hear that click noise. Not when there's a long-armed brown, white, and red thing coming at me. Right, re uh, reload. There we go. Alright, let's... Uh Oh, look at you. Look at you. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think the, the AI is particularly... Oh, there's another one. You must have been by there. Particularly clever. I, th I think it's just that they got some cool animations. The, the speed in which they approach you is good. It's not like they're running too fast and hitting you too fast either. But let's try and kill these so they don't kill. I'm only on 50% health, so... Let's reload as well so we don't have that issue again. <laughs> It was a very... Yes, you're right, Ash. Oh, yeah, hang on. It was, is that their mouths? I just, like, their little animation when you walk in. 
that they might have like a really short bit of their head and then they got like their mouth is that bit we need to try and find oh i've also noticed a little bit of a bug with your movement system uh if you move diagonally you move a lot faster so what you tend to want to do is you want to normalize your movement vector uh vector being a like a direction and an arrow if you will of, of which way you're moving so if you're moving forward you you add like a, a forward vector if you move right you add a, a right vector but what you're doing is when you go both forward and right you're adding both vectors at once um so instead of limiting it so you move in uh, equidistance in every direction you're actually creating a box instead of a circle around your character so that you can move further if you go diagonally so uh, that's something you'd probably want to look at in your movement code because otherwise everyone will be moving around di diagonally to optimize the movement uh, and it's, it's a common mistake in um, in movement code so <gasps> no don't do it again dan i got stuck here before okay turn on the lights okay lights are on oh. Oh. a lunge attack for the enemies do you mean irish john okay so this room is is fully lit now have a little peep in here is this the way we came before i'm trying to remember the way no we came in through that door okay so yeah uh so we could go down that this is out the main room again yeah so we'll, we'll have a look down this little way i mean i'll learn this map by the end of it okay we're gonna go down here there's a bit of a there's a bit of a slightly unpleasant, like, ringy noise in the music, I've just noticed. It's like a vibrate kind of... I can't mimic it very well. But I'm noticing it in my headphones. Just uh, a bit of feedback, it, to a point where it, it annoy me. So, just to give feedback on that. Okay, so we got stairs. We got the baby ones. Look at him. Is he going to jump at me? Don't hurt me. Does it hurt me? Oh, yeah, yeah, it takes 10% 10, 10 health off. Get out of here. Yeah, the reflections are super nice. Was, I was just saying before we, we got stuck last time is, like, uh, the, the details. Because it was set up to be lit in darkness really nicely, that it, it works really well even when lit. It, it, feels, it doesn't feel flat. It feels rich. It feels, like, yeah, really, really high quality, if I'm honest. Okay, anything? Oh, I'm glad I looked right. Oh! <gasps> I'm not a console gamer. Is he left or right now? Don't know where he's gone. What? You! Nope. I know I killed your little baby thing. Please forgive me. Yeah, it's just... It's just like a little ringy vibrating noise with the bass of it. It's very subtle, but I, I it's it's totally fine. Maybe it's just me, but um, it's only fair that I let you know that I have that issue. I may not be the only one. Okay, we've cleared this room. So now we're going across to this room. Uh-oh. Is that... There's nothing in here. So we come to the top floor. And there's nothing. Okay, fine. So this is not the way. Okay, so we've come to the, uh, these ways now. This is the hangar room, if I remember correctly, right? The power, the power room. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go the other way now, which is this way, uh, which takes us back into this room. Okay, that's fine. So those that way is explored. This room is not. Though. I think we we did this way earlier to to open up the. Oh, this door's open now that the power's on. The door that I couldn't get through before. Ah, they both have. First floor elevator. I'm curious what's in the other what's in the other room. I wanna have a little look. Before we uh go in the elevator. What's in here? <gasps> Baby! Uh oh. Come on. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, cool. So it's 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 it was exploring for the sake of killing baby enemies. It's fine. All right, cool. Let's go ahead then. The prompts are nice and clear. Just good. Cool. The door goes down. 
Are we going up? So this is where some audio would be really nice. So I know that something's happening. Ground floor, first floor. Okay, no, it's opened. It's opened. Maybe some vibration or something as well. Bamsu. Oh, is that? I think I know what that is. Is, is that the um, the like the brown furry little thing? I haven't seen that thing for ages. Okay, we got more enemies. Oh my gosh, I almost missed you, didn't I? Okay, we are... Oh, the, it has reloadable ammo, of course. 19, so we can use this shotgun more... Oh, yeah, bu -bu. More often. Okay, open the gate. What's that going to open? Ooh, the music! Ah, the big hangar door. I love how the music pumped up. Oh, that looks ace out there. All right, let's go back down, I guess, right? Uh, good use of music. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really... It's interesting for me, I personally, to, to see how people use music in games. Uh-oh. Reload. Reload. Okay, so there's an enemy down that corridor. Nothing here. Oi! Here we go. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this room's got a load of enemies. <gasps> okay. Good. It's through here. I'm like, that's so curious. This is like a big old map, right? I, I, I thought it was an item to pick up. Not a baby kit. Okay. You also have some like lighting, slight lighting issues with bits like that. I'm not too sure how I'd fix it, but again, just pointing out, it looks a little odd. The corners there are a little as well. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. This is going good. So this is the big room of enemies that we came into, right? And then a okay, I think we're gonna go down to that that main. Okay, do you fix it? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. It is totally in development, so any criticism you have, don't take it personally. It's just I'm going to say the issues that I feel as a player. Uh, and it's totally expected that you, you're developing this still and there's going to be more work done, so. Okay, back down to the ladder. We've explored upstairs. Music's a little repetitive now, but it's good for... It, it could definitely... Uh, for, for the relatively short loop... It must be good for it to have taken only this long to, to kind of get a bit agitating. <gasps> oh! Is it like an auto cutscene now to take me out? Oh, thank you, uh, Namjinas. Good spot. Oh, there's a little cinematic! So is this showing me like the next level or is that it? I'm trying to we'll figure out now, I guess. I feel like this should have it was interesting in front of me, and then we're looking up. It'd be nice if, if if there was better sky, that'd be cool. However, the music's badass all of a sudden. Listen to this. I don't know if you made the music. Oh my gosh! I don't have enemies. All right, let's do it. There is a, a an automatic rifle we could be using, but last time it kind of broke the game, so I'm I'm trying to avoid it at the moment. Oh, okay, good. Let's go. It, it's mission assets. Okay, is that like a bunch of assets to use in the game, is it? It's cool. Oh my gosh, I fell. Okay, did it just respawn me? I think it did. Is there checkpoints? Possibly. The music's so loud that I can't hear the jumpy noises anymore, though, because there was some decent jump noises I noticed before, but I can't hear them. Okay, so we've got moving platforms. We need to figure out how to get around this at the moment. So we've got a big old... Uh, am I meant to do that? Because that didn't feel like the most natural puzzle. <laughs> to kind of have to jump around. It's cool that you can move in the air. It's very unrealistic, but it, it makes for interesting platform. Uh-oh. It makes for interesting platforming. 
But I would say, from a player perspective, it's very hard to to know that I need to do that. But I guess one thing is that was positive for you is you can see it from there, so that's cool. Uh, I noticed another little bug in your movement code as well. Is if you ho well, it may not be a bug. Maybe you want it that way. But if you hold jump, you keep jumping. Most people hold jump when they jump, and they don't expect to instantly jump when they land. Uh, so something to think about. Uh-oh, uh-oh, 20 health. Oh! Hey, babe! Okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, okay, uh, we need to get across here then, right? Whee! Yeah, the platforming element is quite cool. It's... I don't know what it is. Something, something's happening with the. I, I'm falling off. To, I I don't know what it is. I don't. I I'm trying to figure out. Is it just me or is something a bit jank? It could just be me. But there's something that sometimes feels like I don't jump when I should. Maybe there's not too much of a of a grace period. So I'll try and jump a bit earlier. Would you like if the enemies had a way of... Hang on. Oh, it's a double jump thing. So can I... I can only do it when I'm on that. It's a bit... Uh, I've not actually seen that mechanic before. The, the double jump thing can... Oh, oh, no, no. There isn't things like... um. Celeste, right? You can double jump on your, or it replenishes your double jump when you're on a certain area. It's quite uh, an original concept, though. It might, uh, it does make it audio when you're touching it. I guess that's a, so you know when to press jump. Oh, how dare you! What a horror, what a very good uh, placement of an enemy. But from my point of view. It was not so pleasant. I've got seven bullets left. Six. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this classic gamer. We can kite the nav mesh. We can we can utilize this. <laughs> you go back now, boys. You go back. Oh, there's two stairs. I split them up. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, we've got uh, some more jumping pads up here. Does make for interesting traversal, I guess. Yeah, because uh, you'd re you'd reintroduce that mechanic from earlier, that y you jump around things. I think that was fine there. I first thought, oh, I can't jump high enough, but now I know that that's some of the jump puzzle elements of it. I just realised I can probably hold jump, can't I? Because the way that jump is implemented. Okay, let's try. No, oh, no. Okay, so like if I hold jump, I jump repeatedly on the floor, but it doesn't work for these. So yeah, I think in in my opinion, you need to decide how you want jump to work. Either you have to press it each time, or uh, always, or never. Okay, let's do this bit again. Oof. Okay, we made it. Uh, they're, they're fun to do, though. The jump puzzles, they're, they're nice. Is that to come back up, I guess, if I fall down? Is this a switch over here? The torch... Uh, so one thing is, like, the torch brightness. Considering I'm outside and it's not dark anymore, feels a little bit... I don't know. I'm not too sure. End demo. <gasps> oh, so that's how I'd finish. down here. Oh, this would be a great place for a boss. Like a, an arena to fight like a giant one of them or something like that. Yeah, so, uh, I think we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up the demo here because I, th I feel like I've explored all of the content. Uh, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I like, I like how it progressed. It went from a dark kind of little corridors, exploration, to the lights on, more enemies, uh, unlocking that lower hangar. That's where uh, the music changed as well. Um, 
we got down, they gave us that cinematic to kind of look outside, which is cool, kind of set the tone, and immediately there's like 20 enemies in front of you, the music pumps up, uh, it, it does feel good, it feels good. The, the jumpy puzzles, it feels a bit floaty, as I said, but if that's how you want it to be, it works well, um, because like you, you've designed your level and the, the obstacles and the platforming around the fact that you can kind of move and strafe in the air, and it ends up feeling quite good and natural. Uh, I, I think you could do with some better feedback on the jumping on those green things, though. Um, let's um, end that, because it was a bit loud while I was talking. Uh, and we'll close that, and we'll, we'll give some proper feedback on it now, then. Um, so, uh, chat, feel free to give feedback. Let us know what you thought of it. Uh, but if you want help thinking about how to give feedback, there's a bunch of questions on screen that you can look at in order to give some feedback. Uh, Ash, sorry, I missed your comment earlier. You were saying it was a show where the kids had to build creatures to compete in fights uh, and, and obstacle courses. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking of a different thing. What I'm thinking of is... Uh, it had a name. It was uh, this, like, brown, fuzzy, numb creature thing. Creature. That thing. This. Domo, Domo, I guess the name is of this thing. I had slight little memories of, or kind of flashbacks of these while I was fighting those, uh, those enemies. Okay, yeah, thank you for the feedback, uh, Misery Lev. Yeah, I definitely say the, the visuals of it were, were very, really cool. So let's go through these questions one at a time. It'll give me a chance to discuss some of it as well. Use Total Warper for kids. Uh, okay. Interesting. No, I've, I've never heard of it before, Ash. Um, right, let, let's go through each one, one of these questions then, shall we? Swifty Spiffy, hello there. Game feedback indeed. We are on our second game for the evening. Uh, if, if you know anyone or yourself is working on a game and you want to get some feedback on it, do feel free to submit a form. There's only a, two people, I think, ahead in the queue, so that means a fortnight from today I'll play those two games, and then the following fortnight I'll be on for whoever adds the game next to the list. So, uh, let's go through this then. So, accessibility, the game we just played. I think... I almost feel like I want to get the game back up again. Um, I tell you what, we might be able to do this in a bit of a cheeky way. We mute the stream and we just go back to videos here. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Negative damage, nice to have you here. So if I go here and we can just mute the stream and we can go to my, my last bit of footage. Um, so, well, I feel like the you know, we kind of need to make this a bit smaller so you can actually see it as well. See if we can just make these a bit small. I'm not too sure if you're going to be able to to read it. That's the only downside. You get a bit of an idea of how it looked, at least. Um, so the the first question. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can read it. I'm just trying to make sure it's a it's a decent size view. So the first question was accessibility. So are there barriers to hold back the player from experiencing the game, the controls, and the difficulties? So uh, there's quite a few bugs in the game. Uh, we're familiar with that already, right? So that was one of the main barriers for me. If I'm trying out your game for the first time, and there's bugs that make one, I had to wait like two minutes for it to load. That's a a big negative for hoping a, a randomer tries your game. Uh, but then the second thing was, if it then has bugs on it that ends up making it kind of, you have to reload it, that's a big negative then. Um, so just something to keep in mind, whilst you've got these long load times, before you put a build out, you want to try and make sure that game breaking bugs are kind of minimal. Um, or at least you write on the description of the page a bit of information about it so people can know how to not cause it if you know what causes the bug. But anyway, that aside... Uh, the controls felt great. Um, I think uh, the the mouse and keyboard controls were fine. The buttons were I expected. E to interact with stuff. One, two, three to change weapons. Mouse wheels. There's alternatives as well, which was good. When I moved to controller, uh, that was great too. Uh, it, it felt fine. If I'm honest with you, uh, the the only button that I felt wasn't in, as intuitive was reload was on X, and interact was on B, on a, on an Xbox controller at least. And so I, I kind of felt maybe the, the other way around or why the top button would be reload. 
But uh, that that's by the by. That's maybe just my personal pr preference. I don't play uh, first-person shooters that often, if I'm honest with you, uh, on a console. So I may not be the best to give uh, feedback to that. Um, in terms of difficulty, yeah, I, I so the enemies hit you quite a lot. It's quite. I think these hit you for twenty-five percent each, and then the small ones hit you for ten percent each. So it's very. If you don't shoot them, you're gonna die. The the problem is, you can always outrun them. Especially with that diagonal movement speed thing that I talked about as well. So I think your difficulty is far too easy. It feels good to play. It still feels cool to shoot them. But I can too, so easily just kite them around in a circle and shoot them. So how, how, do you, um, how do you prevent that? That's a question, right? And, and I guess what you want to start thinking of is like, how can I give my enemies attacks that are less predictable? How can I make the enemy close the gap? How can I make my repeat behavior something that's not going to benefit me? So you can do things like um, if they can shoot a projectile, then my repeat behavior, if they've shot a projectile, that might be in the path that I'm just going around in a loop in and it might hit me. So that stops that sort of tactic maybe perhaps, right? Um, in terms of closing the gap, you could have a, uh, perhaps the enemy has a charger ability where they will run at you for a set amount of time. Or perhaps they will have like a, a lunge attack where they just, they do a charge animation for a bit but then they go really fast at you, uh, or to, let's just say they go like four meters. Then that means that you, you don't have that safety that I permanently have at the moment, that as long as they're not close enough to attack, I can always just move and they're not gonna get close enough. So uh, it's something to consider. You could also think of the, uh, out of the box a little bit. You could think, you know, maybe there's ones that uh, they leave slime on the floor or every so often they leave like acid something on the floor. And then that means that patch of, can cause damage to you if you walk on it. That's a way to kind of stop the idea of like someone just circle kind of strafing around them to, to kind of cheese them out a little bit. Uh, hold X for interact and tap X to reload. Ah, okay. So they use the same button for it. Interesting, Swifty. But at the same time, it was also used as the interact button. So I guess that does maybe go, uh, go towards why I thought it was... Uh, uh, maybe I went instinctively towards that button to interact. Um, but yeah, so the difficulty needs to improve. The controls are good, uh, I would say. Um, the, and we've talked about the accessibility from a, a demo point of view. Uh, the I guess the figuring out what to do, it's not the most clear, but just through exploring, I would have found that generator room. It looked massively different. It was very obvious when I went up to things that I could interact with them, and I think you did that well. Uh, there was pointed out in chat, there's a typo on the ground floor elevator or something like that prompt, so you might want to check that out. But um, yeah, I think I think anything that was interactable was really um, obvious, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, and then when it got to, to like this stage that we're watching now with the... Um, when there was like jump puzzles and that. I, I like, uh, this stuff was, as much as I was a bit bad at it, there was a few elements that I felt were not great with the controls, and we'll talk about those in a sec. But like the the the, the gameplay element of kind of like this, this kind of floaty platformy element to it with the, the kind of multiple jump things that you introduce as well. Yeah, it felt, it felt good. It felt quite original. It was refreshing to play. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it was good. Uh, and it was engaging for me as well. So let's talk about the gameplay. What's the gameplay loop here? So the gameplay loop really is it's like like a, a Doom game or a first person shooter, a single player game anyway. Uh, you, you need to get from start A to B, right? Without dying. And hopefully there'll be like gates that will block your progress in certain areas. So you need to find a certain keypad or you need to get a certain room. Use a switch that opens up a new area for you to go out. And I think you really, you kind of stuck to that formula well. Uh, the gated progress is what I expected, and it worked well. Um, it, it didn't feel confusing, even though we were going around the same rooms. I felt I was looking for something that would just allow me to progress a bit further. So, um, in terms of challenge, balance, variance, and choices. So, first person shooter, you know, I like to talk about choice with game design often. If, like, two times you're going to play it, are you going to do the exact same thing both times? The first person shooter games kind of are a bit of an exception to that rule because I think pl players are constantly choosing how are they going to shoot the enemy and they constantly have to aim. So, because there's very kind of mechanical skills in a first person shooter game, I think doing the same level again uh, can feel different because of how well you execute your mechanical skills and how well you optimize your your gun choices or your movement or whatever so from from a choice point of view i don't think you definitely need like branching choices or, or ways to make 
different decisions. One thing I would recommend though is if you could have secret areas, reward a player for exploring the rooms they don't have to go to. And they don't, it could give them a bit of a power up, it could replenish their health. That Doom did that really well, you know, if you really explored, you would go and find the, the mega buff thing or the full armor thing uh, or extra guns. And like that rewards a player and it makes a player think it's worth looking around and exploring your content. So uh, that, that's something else that I would consider anyway. If we're talking about then challenge, I did say that I think the game's a bit easy. The, the I died more on the jumping puzzles than the enemies, right? Uh, so that that in my view is something about the difficulty of the enemy encounters. I would I would think about that. That could just be making adjusting the speed. I wouldn't change how much they hurt you, but I would definitely look at adjusting the like how easy it is for them to hurt you because at the moment it feels far too easy to avoid. Um, on that topic, uh, there was no real feedback when you get hit. I think that was vital. That That is vital to have, in my opinion, to make it feel like you're getting hit. There's just this bar at the top left going down. Uh, that, like, being hit is such an important thing in a game like this, right? So I think uh, you really need either some screen shake, some audio, uh, maybe a pulse of red around the screen, something like that, to dictate that, or to denote to the player that they've been hit. Because otherwise you can lose half your health without realizing it if there's one of those little nippers on the floor eating your feet, for example. Um, yeah, so I, th I think that's definitely something from a how it feels point of view that would, would be nice to, to look at. Uh, in terms of the balance, no, I think uh, the balance doesn't really, I guess, I don't know if you had different difficulties in this game, but uh, you, we can talk about the balance between the shooting and the exploration. Now, it did feel pretty nice in terms of the... The, the dynamic, what we had to do uh, in terms of how much time we spent exploring, how much time we spent fighting. Uh, one thing I'd compliment as well, I think you, you've got a good uh, grasp of like where to place enemies. Because um, I think you did a really good job of, of just making them feel like not just rubbishly, thoughtlessly placed. Uh, it, it did feel like they were placing good spots. You can, you can see a little bit back in this video, uh, I think when I jumped over a wall. Yeah, just before this bit. So when I jump, I jump up and over this section. I'm a little bit away from it. Hopefully I can catch up to it. So when I jump, uh, do I make it this time? No, because I'm rubbish. Come on, Dan. Okay, this bit here. So when I fall, there's an enemy there waiting for me when I come down. I don't know if that's intentionally placed there or you happen to get there. But I think like stuff like that is cool because normally you might even jump over it and then he's behind you. Uh, and I think that, that that's clever placement of things. Um, yeah, and I really appreciated it. It felt, it felt fresh. It didn't feel like cheaply done, if you will. So uh, yeah, compliments to that element of it. Okay, let's look at the audio visual then. So um, the visuals at the start, I said the the like. So, so things that stood out to me: you're in the dark to begin with. Your hand is bright blue, glowing. I don't know. I don't know whether that should be darker in the dark, because it's just a bit like. It's a bit distracting, especially with the hand bobbing when you're moving. Uh, it, it was really obvious and a bit like it ruined the, the, the atmosphere a little bit at that start bit, if I had to give my opinion. Um, however, visually, it's really, really good. Uh, I, I really like the style of it. Uh, I really like the lighting. The lighting was really, really well done. It sets the tone really good. You got reflections off of these surfaces, which make it feel like... I don't know, it, it, it's got great atmosphere for something with the, the kind of that, that old school retro visual style to have this like realistic lighting in there as well really does add a, a nice visual kind of element to the game, which um, yeah, I think a few people commented on it in chat as well, which is lovely. Uh, the audio, so there were, there were sound effects, there was walking sounds, there was a jumping sounds, the music drowned it out a bit. And when there's no options for me to level the sound and the music, you wanna be careful with leveling those out. With that said, the music it was a bit repetitive. I complained there was a bit of a ringy noise in, in one of it. That might just be me. But I, what I would say about the music is it felt great when it built up. And I love how you used, like, oh, you've progressed to the next thing, or you've unlocked this door, or you're about to face a, a wave of enemies as a reason to kind of pump up the music. And it set the tone. It set the kind of the energy level that was required for the next bit. Um, and so I think that you, there's some great audio kind of design there or choices made uh, with the audio at least. Uh, from a visual point of view as well, I'd like to compliment the kind of the, the, the 
I don't want to say the attempt at it sounds like you didn't do it but you you know the kind of fly through thing that you did where it's like oh you've opened this gate because we got to a point and then it just like it took control off of me and it zoomed out and it showed this whole area uh the only critique of that bit is like I feel like your end view was just really like not interesting compared to the view five seconds prior to it so as it was going out it kind of panned up and showed you all this kind of jumping puzzle stuff and it just kept going up to the sky. So if the sky had some cool stuff like a rocket in the distance or some planets or, or something nice, that'd be fine. But if not, you might want to kind of have it so when it tilts up, it then like the camera comes out and it can raise up and look down at the, the level as well. Or you can just end it a little bit earlier, one of the two. Um, but yeah, I think it is... It adds a nice dimension to it, actually. It's a way for you to kind of set the scene... Um, Although you do take control away from the player, I, I do think it was still a, a fine thing to add. Um, and it showed that you know how to do that stuff and it's a good skill for you to be practicing as well. Okay, and then finally we have uh, two things, uh, player experience and future development. So player experience, is the game fun or engaging? Is it an original experience? Is the idea innovative? I wouldn't say the idea is particularly innovative. No. Um, player experience, engaging... Yeah, I guess because I wanted to, it was dark, there was enemies popping up, it, I, did, I didn't like genuinely get scared, but there was like a sort of moment, you know, with the enemies around the corner from you. Um, so I think that, that keeps it engaging when you're on edge, when there's a risk of dying, but the game was a bit easy, so I feel I lost a bit of that risk factor, which would have made me more engaged in, in the game if I'm worried about dying and, and losing my progress or whatever it be. Uh, original experience, I'd say, not really, not particularly. It very much had that kind of Doom vibe. But not all games need to be original or, or some, like a completely new idea. So this isn't a negative. This is just me addressing the questions that I give feedback on. But um, lots of elements of it, the audio, the, the visuals, the way that the guns handle, the way that the different guns fire. Uh, I'd be interested in using that rapid fire one a bit more. Um, like those guns were great and they made it fun. Being able to shoot those that shotgun felt really, really satisfying. And I, you saw that I chose to use it quite often towards the end because like I really enjoyed using it. So stuff like that is how you, you can really build into these games to make it feel engaging. You need to make it fun to feel fun. You need to make it feel clean. Uh, and that's where I really think like working on the player controller that you've got here is going to benefit you because you've got, you've got movement that uh, it's a bit floaty that might not be something you need to fix that's just something that may be just how you want it but there's things like moving diagonal uh faster that's not good um you don't uh, that's yeah it, i don't think that's a choice uh i think you need to fix that because it just it, it's not a it's a common mistake and people are aware of it and it, it it takes away a bit of shine from your your game as well so yeah um that that's one thing i, I would address um the other thing is i found with the jumping is like Sometimes it felt like I was pressing jump, but I just didn't. So it may be a case that um, if this is the edge of the platform and I'm running along here, that as I get to the edge of it, I try jumping a bit too late. So maybe the collider is a little bit too small, or maybe you need some generosity rule that if they were on a platform within the last 0.2 seconds, then we'll still let them jump. Uh, it's like a grace period, they tend to call it in platformers. I'm not too sure if they do it very often in 3D platformers, but um, in 2D platformers, you get it very often and it gives it feels better, even if it's slightly mechanically inaccurate. Um, so it's something just felt like my feet were very small sometimes. So I would kind of get to the edge, press jump, and then I'd just fall as if I'd already stepped off. So uh, I had that a few times. So maybe that, that would be something you can consider adding to the, the, the controller, something to kind of help with that experience. Uh, and then finally, areas for future development. Uh, so what could we improve? What would be interested? So uh, I've already, I think I've covered a lot of these already. Uh, I would work on making AI harder, make the enemies harder, make it more risk of me dying. I kind of, I like the dark bits. Um, so it'd be interesting if you can find more, cause the atmosphere was really good in that. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting if you can keep that atmosphere up as you build up the content inside the game. Um, in terms of the the areas of strength like that how good it felt to shoot the, the the puzzles the jumping puzzles you did and the level design felt good and the enemy placement was good uh they, they were definitely things that i think you should continue kind of uh adding your stamp into your future content that you're adding to this in terms of who would be interested in playing this type of game i think it's very much open to to anyone uh shooters are, are pretty broad in terms of the target audience uh 
shooters can sometimes be a little bit mindless where it's just like you don't you just walk around and you shoot anything that moves uh and, and that's fine uh, i think that there's a there's a this scope and and demand for for games like that where you can just uh kind of go through and just shoot everything uh and feel good when you do it accurately without dying so um yeah i think i think it's it's definitely uh, something that would appeal to, to many people. I think if you want to try and get more people playing your game, it'd probably be a great idea to, as I said earlier, to pad up your game page here because you've got a really visually nice game that uh, people don't get to see because that your game page is just empty uh, other than the bit of this information here. So um, yeah, I'd really recommend doing that uh, just so maybe you'll get a couple of people playing it every week uh, and then that, that they can give you feedback and they can feed into uh your development of this game then so but yeah if anyone else has any other feedback uh bad craig was saying is cool aesthetics i love how the enemies fall apart when they die yeah completely agree with that one thing i mentioned earlier feedback wise it would be nice if you got some particle effect or some impact kind of mark when you hit an enemy so you know that you've shot them that'd be good um but yeah if not if anyone doesn't have any other feedback or any questions i would take the opportunity to thank links of Undying for submitting their game. So let's just drop a link to this in the chat if anyone wanted to check it out themselves. Uh, and we'll drop a link also to the game uh, that was submitted earlier, which was super cool. Yeah, so it's you, you code, you give your units code to control how they behave. And it's a game where you have units that can collect energy and then you can return that energy to the base and then the base when it gets to a certain amount of energy it'll produce a new unit but then there's also another team where you want to you can go and attack and the objective is to kill their base but you are running the same you're running one bit of code to control all of your units and so you need to kind of come up with ways to code it to to um kind of control those units in the way that you want to uh, so yeah, there's a link to that game there in chat for you if you were interested in checking it out But okay. Well on that note then uh, Thank you links again uh, And thank you misery love for submitting the game earlier today 